This episode of Your Mom's House is brought to you by Sattva Luxury Mattress, the only online mattress company that provides free delivery, setup, and mattress removal. Welcome, welcome, welcome to Your Mom's House with Tom Segura, Tom Segura. and Christina Pajitsin. Welcome to Your Mom's House. La 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 la. The music's serious. It's a. Uh, who is this? Mars Lover by Yoni's Dior. Yoni's Dior? That's what it says. I like it. Um, Gene. What's going on with you on the road? Uh, November 24th in Man Diego, California. I'll be doing that House of Blues. Get your tickets. Uh, that's on the Thanksgiving weekend. What a better time to get out of your goddamn house. It's fantastic. And go to a show at that point, right? December 8th, Gramercy Theater. I've added a late show, 1030. Uh, tickets are now on regular sale. We did a pre-sale last week that went gangbusters, so... Looks like Judor Titties is coming out strong uh, for this main mommy, and I appreciate that. So get those tickets in advance. And that's it for now, but we're working on 2019. I'm very excited. There's some big cities coming up. What about you, Jean Jackets? 2019 is going to be absolutely bananas for the two of us. We're both doing a bunch of dates. Yeah. I got many to announce soon, but not yet. Um, there's still some things. Let's see. There was a few tickets left in, for the Brea weekend in August. Friday Friday tickets are available for Breast Balls Beach, the West Palm Beach Improv. That's in late August. Um, let's see, September's all sold out. October, I have uh, a few tickets left at the second show in Boise. The second show in Eugene, Oregon is on sale now. Uh, and then there's Ball Sacramento, Fresno, Bakersfield, and uh, I think that's it. Let's see. Oh, Philadelphia has a second show. Orlando, Florida has a second show. And uh, Jacksonville, Fart Myers, Florida. Jack me off of Ilk. Jack me off of Ilk. You know that. And you Augusta. Know that. Those are all on sale. Uh, Come, Temecula. Augusta. You know better than that. Temecula. Uh, Temesticles. Hey! Uh, at the Pachanga Resort and Casino. Pachanga are, sounds like it's a word for pussy. It does. Those are all on sale. TomSegura.com. Check them out. Try it out. Enjoy it. Have fun. <laughs> all right. <laughs> try it out. You know how many emails we get and tweets telling us that they can't even hear the phrase try it out now? Oh, yeah. It's, com- it's just a normal phrase ruined it's, it's for ruined, everybody. It's ruined it for people. <laughs> try it out. It really makes me happy. <clears throat> try it, really it out. Happy. Try it out. <laughs> try it out. Yeah. What a weird thing to say about that. Like, come over, Try it out. piss on me, beat You also me. can't hear about deals. It's a deal, man. <laughs> yeah, it's so weird. Yeah. Try it out. I mean, I know you've been thinking about it. Why not try it out? Like, that's the, the, the inference, right? We have... Um, inference? Inference? How do you say it? Inf- yeah, in- that's what you're inf- inferring? Inf- I don't know. Inference? It might be inference. This might be another one of those weird foreign things because I was raised by foreigners. I don't yeah. know if I can say anything. No, no, you, you don't talk English good. <laughs> nope. Um, look, let's get serious. A lot of people want to talk silly stuff <laughs> and, um, you know, make light of unimportant things. This is a little more sophisticated show. Yeah. And... I'm kind of sick of the silliness. Yeah. I want to talk about real issues. Okay. What, what did you so, have on your mind? Well, I just, you know, let's just have this introduction here. This is from the BBC. Are we changing the format of the show now? Is that the what you're The whole saying? show is going to get a lot more serious. Political. We're going to do politics every Absolutely. week. Absolutely. Every, every week <laughs> I want hard-hitting geopolitical international uh-huh. debates. Uh-huh. I want to talk about comparative economics. And I... I <laughs> oh, all right. Sorry. Well, I, I, that's, you know, you do what you want to do. I'll do what I do. Okay. Okay? Here we go. And here here you go. (laughs) Blow me up, Tom. Farts typically have sound. (laughs) All sound has a frequency. (laughs) What is the frequency of a fart? Find out next. This shit is big time! Who is (laughs) right? Don't bring anyone mother into this. Your mom in the fucking stands! Welcome. Welcome. Welcome to your mom's house. 
That's interesting to talk about. <laughs> So your your thing is what frequency are your farts? I you know it's funny because we watched that movie about sounds. Oh um, my god, I hated it. Yeah, I know they What's didn't have it? one fart in that. Nobody whole movie. fart. That, look, of all the questions, it's called that a need, quiet place. A quiet place need to be answered. How are they taking shits? Yeah. Do they have diarrhea. How are they farting? Those are the two biggest. Uh, how are they burping? John Krasinski, Emily Blunt. Which I, they're married in real life. They're like married us. in real life. Um, the movie was a big hit. I mean, how was, are they jerking off? They're not. How are they watching porn and masturbating? Nobody. None of that was addressed. Yeah. None of it was addressed. How loud he comes? Does he make a lot of noise when he comes? Because <laughs> if you don't know the premise of the movie, <laughs> it did very well at the box office. <laughs> it's that there's these crazy <laughs> aliens out there that um, kill anything basically that makes a noise. Yeah. So the world is is in utter chaos, and he and his family are living in out in a field somewhere, basically in a farmhouse. And they, you know, if, if you knock something over, you immediately have to hide because these aliens that kill everything are blind, but they have super hearing, so they hear every little noise. They hear every fart. Yeah, every ejaculation. And if he's like, ah, <laughs> they would hear that. You know, that movie <clears throat> was so stressful. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, how are they watching this? Right, how are they watching the scene? How, how are how are porn stars shooting scenes? Does it make sense? Aliens. aliens are killing everything. Yeah. Anyways, watch it like this. it's a good movie. I, I'm just stressed out movie. because of the content was stressing me out. You a were lot. you were super stressed. I was out. like, I tap out. I tap out. I can't. I can't watch children being I in know. danger. I children fucking in hate it. This is a lot. And like, again, the big issues of the film were not addressed. Um, that was upsetting. But we stayed. So we stayed in a hotel. We had a baby moon, our very last one before this baby jeans comes into town. Right. And as usual, we were perusing the porn options in the hotel room because uh, we were, you know, the one was like, Daddy loves my big tits. That's right. I think that's always my favorite. You can tell a lot about the hotel's clientele by what kind of porn they offer in the room. A lot of transsexual porn. Lots of transsexual stuff. But Daddy loves my big tits really stood out. <laughs> Daddy loves my big tits. And what really kind of upset me uh, with these titles is that I'm leaving so much money on the table right now. You are. Because right now I'm nine months pregnant and that is such a lucrative porn category mm -hmm. that I'm not even taking a part of right now. I don't even, where's my cut? It's out there. <sighs> it's out there if you're ready to make a move. It seems like the natural money on the table. desire for a pregnant woman <laughs> to have. When you're around pregnant nine women a lot, nine months too. You you realize you're like, why aren't you doing porn right now? <laughs> <laughs> Seems like what they all want. Yeah, it's an ideal time. Your body looks great. You feel great. You're at the top of your game. You are leaving hundreds of dollars just hundreds sitting out there. Fifties everywhere. Yeah. How much do you think a woman gets for that genre? I don't know. I don't know because I know that. I mean, without being really keyed into it, that that whole business model ha has taken such a hit because of free, you know, tube yeah. sites. Yeah. So it used to be when people made a lot of money, you know, first of all, there was porn used to be in cinemas. Then it was you had to go Cin buy. I like it. <laughs> cinema. Yeah, cinema. A cinema. Then you had so, to go buy videotapes <laughs> or DVDs. That was so. Could you imagine eating popcorn? Oh my and God. like watching no, going to it is the most so vile weird. disgusting thing ever <laughs> how do you in sit public? through the whole hour oh, the whole thing is don't you want to be alone when you watch <laughs> porn the whole point. Yeah. how do you sit through like an hour and change of a movie and not jerk off with each other or even if you go like i'm not going to it's like then aren't you just always distracted <laughs> by other guys jerking off right. or... <laughs> it had to have just been a jerk fest in these theaters and the i'm sorry the cinema as you refer the cinema. cinema yeah but then then they got paid money because they sold a lot of Videotapes, the DVDs. Yeah, they put you on the cover, and you know you were you were selling uh, uh, VHS. Yeah, yeah, first. you were selling copies. Yeah, then DVDs, but now with with free, I think it's really driven the money down. So, but I think you're at least making a few hundred bucks for your pregnant porn scenes. At least, and the good news is, but it's not. It's a niche 
thing. It's not like, you know. But that's why it's even more in demand. I don't know. Is it? I don't know. But the good news is I can't get pregnant again. So I feel like I should be working a lot right now. Yep. Like this is an ideal time for Would a woman. you do like the airtight, the two in you, three in you? What's airtight again? At one in every hole. Yeah. I mean, I'm already pregnant, so what's yeah. to lose? You know, the cool thing imagine? is you have something to show the kid, too. <laughs> you know? I mean, right now you can show your kid that you did stand up pregnant. Well, that's exciting. Not really. Not compared <laughs> to three dicks in you. And being like, you're what? in there. Nine, you're in the scene. I must pregnant. Yeah. It's a really cool thing to, to share with a child. It is. And also... That would be a good clip. And also... <laughs> Who's that? That's Natasha. Oh my gosh! Can we talk about these two? By the way, yeah. Well, first of all, let's. let's, let's well, we're I, jumping I, all over we're the place. Well, first of all, seriously, you really do have to be hard up to do nine month pregnancy porn. Like yeah. you, you got to be in dire straits. Well, or just really committed or to the smart. game. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> really committed. I think that there's a level of commitment there. <laughs> you know, kind of reminds me of the CrossFit Games. Right. Those those people <laughs> work out a lot. The cro- Oh, I, you know, I follow fit moms of Instagram mm-hmm. and there's all these lunatic women who are nine months pregnant doing deadlifts. Is that yeah. what that's called? Where the, the yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, over their bellies and shit and <sighs> jumping up on boxes. Oh, they're doing like feet. power cleans and power <laughs> snatches. Yeah. It's my favorite. It's so crazy. Can I tell you one of crazy. my greatest motivators? Is, it's a, it, I know it sounds super sexist, yeah. but I look at it and I'm like, holy shit. And I, I do, you? I do think of it as motivation. I know someone will take it the wrong way because this is the era of taking everything. Social too justice warriors. Yeah, someone's gonna be like, <laughs> well, deal with it. We got to tweet about this. I have <laughs> found some women that are like yeah. workout warriors. Yeah. That are like, a hundred and twenty-five pounds. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That are stronger than me. Sure. So I look at it and I'm like, this chick is out squatting me, out, <laughs> out cleaning me. Like, it's out. I, I, I look at it and I'm like, holy shit. I, I mean, it sounds like I'm saying, you know, <laughs> this shouldn't be possible, but I'm really just amazed <laughs> by it, you know? Well, I think that, I think I feel your amazement too. Yeah. When I see like a tiny chick and you're like, how is she so powerful? I, I saw an a, a Instagram thing. I, I should look it up who it is, but this woman was, I mean, like, looks like she's about 5'3", um, 125 pounds. I mean, totally yoked, but throwing around real weight, like <laughs> cleaning real weight. And I was like, oh, my God, I need to get into the gym more. It's amazing, isn't it? She's fucking half my size. It's amazing. People are capable of. Yeah. I mean, obviously, I'll never work out to the degree that she works out. Her whole life is working out, but it still was amazingly motivating yeah of course yeah. Uh, my favorite are the instagram the fit moms of instagram and they'll be like four days postpartum and they're totally flat stomach it's crazy. six pack you're like are you fucking out of your mind like, it's okay just relax you give yourself a minute you know? it's a lot you don't need to go back to the gym right away 24 yeah. hours after you had the baby just be fat for a minute well look so we were talking <laughs> about first let's, let's, fi- let's finish this uh yeah frequency thing okay so right so that that whole movie, I don't want to give it away, but they're just trying to find, you know, what can defeat these super sonic <laughs> aliens. And it got us thinking about sounds and frequencies because yeah. that's, that's what they're dealing with. I mean, just l- try to learn a little bit. Try to open your mind and learn a little bit here, okay? Oh, sorry. Yeah. Sorry. Human farts come in all ranges of sounds. <laughs> there are popcorn <laughs> farts, which sound huh. like their name, quick and typically of the same note. Yeah. Then there are also longer farts, ones that slide up from one note to the other, typically going up the musical scale. Mm. That's right. That's really interesting. So if you wanted to find the frequency of a fart, how would you go about doing that? First off, you would need to find out which note you're farting. It might be a good idea to record the fart. Then you Using a piano, or if you're a trained singer, you could use your voice to find the note or notes. Once you find the note, you can then consult this chart to find the corresponding frequency. I'm already thinking huh. about how much this video would upset <laughs> Natasha. <laughs> oh, she did not like farts at all. What is the average fart I mean, frequency? 
Science has not yet provided the answer to the average fart frequency as of 2015. And while this is a rather unscientifically provided hypothesis, the average fart frequency likely ranges in between notes C2 and C6, (laughs) or 130.81 and 1046.50 hertz. Well, hold on a second. I mean, this is just fascinating information. I don't even know what that means. Why would it it be important to know the frequency of a fart? Yes. Well, there's probably no real reason to know this information other than to entertain yourself or your friends. Of course. But still, this video actually gives you a lesson in sound engineering. This is similar to the technique recording engineers use to isolate unwanted sounds so they can cancel them out in the mix. By finding the frequency of a tone, or Uh in this case, a fart, one can remove the sound or boost it by finding that frequency in an EQ and manipulating it from there. Okay, she lost me. She, I, I was I don't know like, what the I fuck she's telling me. Why are we for. removing frequencies? I wanted to know more farts. about frequencies. That sounds like, like a D minor. Is that the. I don't know anything about <laughs> music and <laughs> frequencies that. and sounds, any of that, but yeah. I just feel like King Ash Ripper would blow away this engineer. Yeah, this is bullshit. Um, Bring in some real farts. <laughs> Some Those real- farts were like children's. My our toddler farts like that. Yeah, but um, back to what you were saying. So we we had Mosha and Natasha in. They have a special on Netflix, uh, the, the honeymoon, honeymoon tour, yep. and they were delightful. And we learned so much about them. But I think the real carryaway and the thing that's been kind of sticking to you and and me is the fact that they don't fart in front of each other. Oh damn. Yeah. Another mean, great drop. Yeah, um, yeah, I know they uh, they uh, don't. I and mean, that's breaking six news. Six years. Wow. Six years of wow. no farts. What do you uh, listen? I can't even wrap my brain around something like that. It's crazy. It's really wild. How I mean, do, you do it. I don't know. Here's the thing: is like now you can't. I mean, I think it's. I think in a way the woman leads, right? Because. If a woman makes it clear to a man, no, if yeah. you make it clear that it's not accept, like really not acceptable, where she's made it clear it's not going to yeah, happen, right. um, then you're only doing that because you want to really upset that person. <laughs> I feel like I started that lead in our relationship, and yeah. then it was completely disregarded. It by- was disregarded, right. but it was also met with uh, embracement and joy. I don't know. I don't know about that. I just know that. I had wishes, I had things established, and those wishes were just done away with. I waited months. Three. Four. Three. Four. <laughs> and you put my hand in your lap. We were watching TV together, sitting in your boxers, as usual. Yeah. And you farted on my hand and just started laughing and smiling. Well, I thought that was that was bold. <laughs> it was bold. And it that was a, was. it's like, why... Just sneak one out. Why not just go for it completely? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, I think. How do you think Natasha gamble. would have reacted? Oh, to that? I, you break up immediately. I think if, even if you had a kid together, she'd divorce you. Really? I don't think she's for pulling down that for move. That. She's not. You know, what if he did that move now? That that would be grounds for termination. For really? Moshe. I, I don't think that would be cool for her. Yeah, because they're they're not even doing the lean over and fart. <laughs> well, well, and what's really interesting about their interview is that they don't even announce when they have to take dumps in front of each other. No. Which I find so hard. I mean, how do you live with somebody every day, day to day, and yeah. you you just disappear for fifteen I'm kind of minutes? Fascinated though, because yeah, it also is insight into. I don't understand how other. I mean, that's. First of all, it's not, we're not talking about three months in. This is six, six years. Six years. And a baby. Yeah, which generally breaks down a lot of those barriers. Yeah. If you've seen a woman give birth, you generally. But then you kind of admire it, right? That <sighs> that they stay that committed to keeping it. I, I honestly, yeah. I mean, look, I'm not trying to pass judgment on them. I'm just trying to understand how you can go without farting. Uh, she didn't want to talk about and that. And shitting for six years. She's like, without... he eats well, it's fine. Like, but, let's jump over But if you eat well, that makes you fart even more. That's a good point. You eat a lot of veggies. I feel like he eats pretty healthy. Right. Yeah. I feel like he's holding a lot of farts. I mean, look, my my ex-stepmom and dad, my stepmom had this policy. There's no farting. No farting. Did no. she ever fart in front of you? Never. Not in Never. the not in these 17 years I knew her. Now, my dad, on the other hand, would disregard it from time to time when I was around at least. Mm-hmm. And then we would have a good laugh at the fart and she would get very upset and she would leave and, and get really, really, really mad. Mm. So I think they had that no fart 
policy. Right. I just, I, what about the sneak outs in the middle of the night? Well, those don't count. Those, those, you don't think that those anybody would forgive. That's, that's a completely unreasonable. But I'm talking about you're awake. You got to fart. I mean, God, how many a day are we? Oh, my gosh. And then what if you ate Korean barbecue Ugh. and you've had kimchi and the farts are just a lot that day? So what are you, you're holding it in all day? It's got to be very difficult. I mean, my favorite farts are the ones that wake you up. Those are the best. You wake me up with yeah, farts all the time. Like, nice. I was just asleep. <laughs> <laughs> Burr. You do it all the time. You do it constantly. It makes me makes me laugh a lot. I don't know. I mean... Again, I'm not judging them. That's totally their decision. I'm just trying to wrap my head around how it, it would be even possible for us, I'm saying. Yeah. <clears throat> I'm really just thinking about us. Like I don't, you know, It can't happen. By the way, speaking of your uh, your porn quest, your pregnancy porn, Yeah. looks like the mommies are uh, flooding some comments in Pornhub. There's a comment section there. <laughs> and, oh, uh, shit. It says, like if you keep your jeans high and tight. 250 thumbs up here. Oh, wow. Um, then someone wrote, try it out. 92 thumbs up. So it's jeez, jeez. like we have a fan base here on, on Pornhub. He's on Pornhub. He should have taken about 10 to 12 Benadryl. That stuff <laughs> makes you hornier than you've ever been in your entire life. <laughs> try it out. Piss on me. Beat me. Try it out. Hey, Hitlers. I mean, these are all. What clip is this for? I, they, it doesn't mention here. I don't know. Hmm. But Maybe I know it's black guys who like to fuck and fuck good. It's pretty good. Yeah. Oh, oh, it's one. It looks like it says it's one of the, uh. Uh, ball hog videos. Oh, there you go. Yeah. That would make sense. Someone said, <laughs> I had uh, to check out uh, the Pornhub uh, <laughs> ball hog videos. Horrific. Who wants to see someone <laughs> slurp on balls God. for 80% of a video? <laughs> Anyways, just want to let you know that the mommies took over the comments. So it is <laughs> it is on the, um, the ball hog video. Wow. Hi, I'm Peyton Lafferty, and I'm a ball hog. <laughs> Peyton Lafferty. Yeah. Before I forget... Uh, movies. We were watching a trailer for that movie Mamma Mia came on. Oh, for something. fuck's sake. I know. And I, it's so funny. It's like an all star cast, too. Yeah, it's fit. I'm sure. Yeah. Meryl Streep, Cher, and all these, you know. Um, but I, I can't think of something I'd want to watch less. It's pretty fucking terrible. I mean, and then I got to thinking, what are the other horrible movies I could make you watch? So would you rather. Oh, oh, oh my Mama God. Mia. Yeah. Would you rather sit through Mamma Mia? And mm. I mean, you got to go to theater and really sit down and watch every stupid thing. <clears throat> Enjoy all the ABBA songs. Mm-hmm. Or Chicago. Yeah. He had it coming. Da, 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 da. It's all like the crime. The, yeah. You know, with Queen Latifah's in there. It's really hard for me to say. It's yeah. really hard for me. Well, we saw a little bit of Chicago. But we saw six seconds. It was on TV. Right. It was unbearable. Yeah, That's we turned it was... out. We threw the TV fucking out the window. <laughs> but. I mean, they seem terrible. They're both terrible. I hate musicals so oh, much. So do I. And um, musical movies are even worse. Uh, I lasted literally the <laughs> first, not even to the completion of the first scene of La La Land because they started singing. Oh, I forwarded through all the songs and that. I just like Ryan Gosling. Fucking hate it. I walked out of the movie about P.T. Barnum. I didn't know that fucking was a musical. That's a musical? Yeah, I went to the theater to go see it. And then halfway through the first song, I was like, I, I don't know if I can do this. And by the third song, I was like, I'm, I'm out. Dude. Yeah. I got to go. I don't like it. I was pregnant. I walked home <laughs> cold. Really? I was like, I can't fucking, I can't. You walked? Yeah, I was in a, a puta. Was I pregnant oh. then? Yeah. No, no, I wasn't pregnant then. Hmm. And Short Lake, uh, Short Lake Shitty. I mean, how do I pick one of these awful fucking things? Well, I don't okay, know. Here's Ma- Mama Mia's a chick flick. So is Chicago. Yeah. But Mama Mia's ABBA. Do you like ABBA? I can tolerate it, I guess. I think I probably like ABBA more than the straight up Chicago musical songs for that for that movie. Yeah, those are terrible. Because those are like traditional uh, songs story. for a yeah, a musical story. I could tolerate <sighs> ABBA more. You know what I don't like about Chicago? I'll say mm. the what I did watch of like the Queen Latifah thing, yeah. like she's like the boss, the prison guard who like yeah. runs stuff yeah it's the, the repetition of the chorus or whatever yeah. like i'm the boss lady they call me the boss and i'm the boss and i boss oh, you around and yeah. you're like i fucking heard you say <laughs> yeah. that like I, I get it you're the boss people some people love this shit the repetition is well you what know some, here's the thing i i the older i get the more i understand that people like all kinds of different things yeah and 
you know, it enrages you sometimes. Yeah. Um, what's funny to me is that they don't, the people that love that get mad at you for not loving it. That's the funny part to sure. me. Because I remember when we talked about slam poetry oh. and we made fun of that. Oh and then people God. would write in like, I love it. I'm like, so yeah. go love it. Don't I, care. Why are you, why does it affect you what I like? I'm just telling you what I like. I know, they get so personally offended. Yeah, it's like these are just opinions of here's one a, or two here's people. Here's the thing. I, I like ABBA's music. I have to So you admit. could tolerate that I one. grew up listening to it because both my parents are Euro, you know, they like that stuff. So I like Fernando. I like I like a lot of the ABBA songs. Then you, Oh, then that's an easy choice for you. But it's an annoying fucking movie. Like yeah. It's an annoying... It is a good cast, though. And I don't want to hear them sing ABBA I songs. I want to hear ABBA singing ABBA But songs. Meryl Streep, Pierce She's Brosnan, great. Colin Firth. It's a good... It's a good... Yeah. But it's so lame how they incorporate the music into it, you know? Yeah. <sighs> so this must have been... Was this a huge hit when it came out originally, the original one? Yeah, I think it, Mamma Mia has been out for a, a, it was a musical for a long time. Yeah. And then they did these movies of it. And now there's a sequel yeah. to the first Mamma Mia. Yeah. She's pregnant. She's like, this is where my like, mom got her pussy blasted out right. here. Right. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, it's a lot of us Euro trashers love uh, Mamma Mia. I'm pretty sure my stepmom went to go see it. Yeah, you think so? Yeah. Yeah. There was something in the air that night. Like, you like that song? Da, 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 da. Fernando. Fernando. I like Fernando. Um, There's no regrets. It's kind of nice, right? <laughs> okay. Yeah. So much air in my belly. Oh, uh, let's check. <laughs> well, you got an email. Yeah. Um, the- <laughs> <laughs> hey, mommy! <mommies. laughs> it's amazing. I was listening to episode four fifty three about female super burps. Yep, yep. My girlfriend of three years always burps this way. She doesn't even <laughs> try. It's just how it comes out. <laughs> to be honest, this is one of the things that sealed the deal on our relationship <laughs> early on. Such a beautiful Eastern European redhead burping oh. loud is super sexy. <laughs> Now, I've always had super farts. I love spicy foods and have huge farts every day. <laughs> so we had the perfect balance in our relationship. She's 39 weeks pregnant now. Oh, my God. Congrats. Since the end of our second trimester, she's had super farts as well. Now she is totally dominating me in the gas game, <laughs> and I'm feeling a little jealous. She even had a supersonic double pipe classic a few weeks wow. ago. Wow. Congratulations on that. More so than the baby. Even. What do you suggest I do about this blatant emasculation, <laughs> mommies? I love the show. Love you both. Silly. Keep those jeans high and tight. Piss on me and beat me. Home here now, David. <laughs> Home here now. Yeah. What do you mean emasculation? I think you need to celebrate. No. Why Why does it have to well, cause he's feeling, damage he's, what you're doing? Well, he's feeling a little left out. She's trumping him <laughs> hardcore in this stuff. Yeah, but pregnancy is kind of an unfair advantage in the double That's pipe true. classic. I would so. say this, David. You better celebrate for about another week because it's <sighs> oh, about to be life. over. Yeah. So just know that it's temporary. You know, it's almost like she has a cheat code. She does have a cheat code. Yeah. And once that baby jeans comes out, the baby's going to have more farts than both of you. So time to get over it. Yeah, it's... Um, get over yourself. Jeez. It's, it's, it's time to uh, <laughs> let her know that, you know, she can enjoy this while it lasts because it's not going to last much longer she's 39 weeks pregnant she's right there man she's right at the door that's so funny uh this female burp. your farts will be back oh that... <laughs> and you'll you'll don't uh, you worry <laughs> yeah um i love the idea that women are strong in the burp game yeah it's pretty cool this could start a whole gender war now between who's better at burping the men or the women yeah at the burp challenge it's pretty quiet cry- pretty crazy i mean sometimes i feel like mine are better than yours and sometimes yours are better than mine you feel like sometimes yeah the fart game is really yours. Like, I'm going to give that to you. I feel really? like you dominate. But the burp game, you well, think? Here, here's why. Your farts are consistent Yeah. over time. I'm I'm more regular. Yeah. But sometimes my burp game is strong. Sometimes yours is. It That's true. Burps kind of go here and there. Um, another reminder before I forget, I've been trying to remind people that new episodes are going on Twitch before YouTube. So uh, we will be experimenting a little further down the road with live ones. But for right now, YouTube uploads at 11 p.m. Pacific Tuesday evenings. Twitch will do 9 p.m. Pacific. And it's twitch.tv slash your mom's house podcast. So there is that reminder. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. 
What? Well, I just feel like I feel like farts kind of go back and forth too. It all fluctuates. It's all cycles and seasons, you know. Yeah. Uh, so we were driving yesterday home, and um, I saw somebody walking their dog, shirtless as usual, which I find horrifically disgusting. I don't know. I don't know why guys think it's okay to go shirtless if I can't go shirtless. It's kind of unfair. Yeah. True. <sighs> Anyways, I had one of those things, Tommy, where I've been saying something one way for forty-two years. What is it? And then you pointed out to me. Yeah. Like Smart and Final. Remember when I was yeah. like, dude, I don't even know what's in Smart and Final. I thought it was like office supplies. Like, mm-hmm. yeah, you're smart, but all, all sales are final. final. I had no idea that Smart and Final was like a grocery type of store. Mm-hmm. Well, anyway, yesterday I go, that guy's wearing a sun visor. How fucking lame is that? Like a sun visor is the fucking most useless thing because your top of your head is burning. And you go, it's not a sun visor, you dork. It's just called a visor. Yeah. And my fucking head exploded because I'm like, my whole life my parents have called it a sun visor. Yeah. And chewing gum. Well, look at this I've right heard here. chewing gum my whole life, so I thought everybody calls it chewing gum yeah, yeah, or sun yeah. visor. I mean, it might be like what I told you was that it might technically have started has started out as people saying a sun visor like in the 70s or something maybe like when it first came whenever they first designed them yeah but my whole life whenever when someone's referring to that hat no one says sun it's just like a <laughs> visor are you sure 100 percent. because both my foreign parents call well it a look sun it's visor. Sa- I, like i said i i thought it made sense a sports visor also called a sun visor or visor ca- cap is a type of crownless hat. Blah blah blah. It's a visor. Yeah, I mean, sun visor. There yeah, the sun okay. visor. But but you're more American than I am, right. and I would take your word over. Well, it, I, like I said, I think technically it might be called a sun visor. Maybe makes sense. Right. That that was the original name. But if you're talking to people here, you would just say a visor. Like you know, you no, wouldn't you wouldn't say hand me that sun visor. <laughs> You'd say, oh really? Yeah, you wouldn't say give me a piece of chewing gum. I've been saying that for forty no, years. No, you're you're, then... you're standing out as not being from here. Yeah, <laughs> I, I mean, called it chewing everybody gum would my know what life. you meant. <laughs> everybody knows life. what you mean, but they also are like, this person just learned English. Like <laughs> they, yeah, it's it's a visor. Yeah, I've been saying chewing gum and sun visor my whole life until well, until visor. yesterday. Sun visor. I mean, I've never. So, but that that's interesting. Yeah. I just never heard. I I guess I've never been around people who use that word enough. Right. My mother called it a sun visor, so I called it a sun visor. This looks like that. The the thing for your windshield. They're calling that a sun shade. Uh huh. But remember when those were popular in the eighties? Yeah. Everyone had but a see, not even that many shit. hats come up here. For, right for, for sun, sun visor. visor. Yeah, it's interesting. Yeah, that was funny. You did go like, "Hey, a sun visor." Look at that. Look at that lady walk by. It's like you mean a visor? They're so lame. Sun visors, though. Just makes the top of your head hot. That's so dumb. It's Why would stupid. you even wear one? I don't know. Like, yeah, if it's hot, it, it implies that the sun's out and cooking your head. Yeah. So why would you leave that part of your head uncovered and then? Why not just wear stupid. a cap, right? Yeah. Um, should we pause for a moment? Because our, our guests should be here any moment. Press pause. Should we do that? Yeah. Take a quick pause and uh, we'll be right back. Mm. Uh, all right, we're back. We um, took a quick break and our guest is joining us now. He says here you've done some acting. Mm. It's, it's, it says there I've done some acting. <laughs> yeah, is that, <laughs> is that <true>? graffiti? <laughs> I, <laughs> yes, I have done, I have done <laughs> acting. When I first got into stand up, um, that's all I wanted to do was stand up comedy, you know. Yeah. So I was hanging out the improv and stuff, and and um, one day Mark Lanau, who was Bud Freeman's uh, partner, business mm-hmm. partner, uh, sat down next to me. He goes, "Hey, you ever think about acting?" And I said, "Not really. I just kind of, you know, I want, I want to do stand up. That's all I want to do." He yeah. Goes, you don't think about acting because sometimes there'll be a, a casting agent will come in and see you in the back room and want you to come in and do a cold reading for their pilot or whatever. You know, it could be a yeah, you know, a good thing. So. Um, also, he taught acting, <laughs> so that was his oh, pitch to me. Oh, you know? there you go. But I did take up acting, and I did a lot of workshops, and um, and I was glad I did. Yeah, I mean, you've made uh, quite. A, I should probably say your name. It's uh, <laughs> it's Kevin Neal and everybody who Ayo. is uh, who's Ayo. listening to us. Um, thank you, first of all, for coming over. Really appreciate it. I, it, uh, it was easy. I live upstairs. I didn't know you guys. Yeah, were I didn't. Down here. I didn't know you were gonna ever come down. <laughs> yeah. That's the thing. 
I mean, I heard a lot of noise down here, and I thought there must be people that live down there. <laughs> Look, it's surreal that you're sitting in front of me. Um, because first of all, first of all, what the fuck are you taking? Is it is this how you don't look older? <laughs> this juice? What what's going on with no, you? No, I just started drinking orange juice. Yeah. I never used to drink that much of it because it had a lot of sugar in it. I'm trying to cut down on my sugar intake, but and also I used to have oatmeal every morning, and that changed about two weeks ago. Right now I've switched over to eggs. Why know? is that? What why the sudden change? I think I just got tired of uh Oatmeal. The oatmeal. Yeah. Over and over. Did you flavor it or just plain? Oh well I'm I'm the king of oatmeal. I'll go back to it too. And I'm just taking a little hiatus. A little gotcha. We've been we've been on eggs for a while. Yeah, now. I hate them and I eat them. I force myself to. Well oh, you need to. Like well yeah. I mean okay. I even asked you this, I think, when I saw you at Laugh Factory. It uh, is this just genetic? This is why you, you, you look like you, you did in nineteen ninety four? Well, I am rotting on the inside. <laughs> you are that's the problem. See, that makes me happy. Yeah. <laughs> because it really upsets me that um that you you maintain so well. How old are you? I am twenty six. I wish you would guess. Yeah, wow. Kevin, guess yeah, how really old let yourself go. <laughs> Do you wanna guess? Um I have you're like one of those you're like a golfer. I yeah. can't tell how old you are. I mean, your eyes look young. Uh -huh. The rest of you looks really, really decrepit. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and say 40. That's a pretty good guess. That is a good guess. I'm 39. I guess. guessed okay. older. Yeah. Yeah. We used to call him the Albert Pujols of comedy. Yeah, because you know, a lot of the baseball players, especially the Dominican guys, um, would lie about their age yeah. uh, when the recruiters went down. So they'd be really? like 17. Oh. And the scouts would show up, and they'd be like, "I'm 14," and then they would get signed. <laughs> and Pujols was the guy who, because 17 was too old. Yeah, mm. yeah. really. Yeah, With modeling. They would because they would, they'd be playing in these like little league teams, and then, then the guy would finally get in the majors, and really, some of them would really start to show their age, and they'd be like, "You're 23." <laughs> like <laughs> the guy's like, "Nah, I'm actually 31," <laughs> but you know, they just yeah. they did whatever it took to get in. Well, I think genetically I was uh, kind of lucky because when I was in high school, I looked like I was 12 when I graduated. Mm. If you look at my high school yearbook picture, I realized I had no body hair. I was so embarrassed because I was so far behind everybody. Yeah. And um, and I had I was 5'8 when I graduated high school. I'm 6'4 now. What? Yeah. You were 5'8 when you graduated yeah, yeah. high school? Yeah, 5'8. And I had a lot of baby fat on me and stuff. And um, and then I just shot up after uh, high school. You know, I got a, uh, I, I went to college and I got a job lifeguarding. Maybe it was sitting out in the sun where I just started growing. Made you grow. Yeah. But, so um, you actually graduated high school as what would be considered a short guy. I mean, five eight. Is yeah, like, average is size maybe a little yeah. low, lower. Um, I'm not sure what. Uh, see, as a tall person, you don't really think about height. You just uh, the only time I think about height is when I see a really tall guy mm -hmm. and I think, man, that guy's tall. Oh. Am I that tall? I hope right. not, and I'll stand next to him <laughs> yeah. without him knowing. And oh, I'll, really? Oh, thank God. <laughs> thank so, God I'm not yeah, that tall? Yeah. I think I'm like just a hair below freakishly tall. And that's what I yeah. hear a lot from people when they first see me. They say, I didn't realize you were this tall. Mm -hmm. yeah, I, didn't I said, I know. I just realized it the other day. And it's so genuinely upsetting, too. It's another thing about it, you know? Yeah, it's upsetting. How because, tall you are. Yeah, because, yeah. yeah. It's like when you expect to have like a, uh, a nice big... <laughs> Corn on the cob, uh -huh. and all they have is like a corn dog. Oh man, you weren't, you didn't have that pictured in your head. No, and I see. I'm trying to think if I ever imagined how tall you were, because I remember, um, you know, my first exposure to you was Weekend Update, and I don't think you when when you're watching you're that sitting down. Yeah, of course you, you don't can have never any, tell. You don't know. But you know, then your Hans TV's and not Franz. that big either. You no, know? I tell people they need to get a bigger TV. <laughs> that way they'll see how tall I am. Yeah, how tall you yeah, are. I'm not Wait. like five inches tall. Where did you grow up? I grew up in Connecticut. Oh, Bridgeport, nice. Connecticut. Not proud of it, but I heard they just got a new comedy club there. Uh, the first comedy club. Oh. In Bridgeport? In Bridgeport, yeah. Where is Bridgeport? Stress Factory. It's, um, it's about an hour and 15 minutes uh, north of New York City. Oh, that's really close. Long Island Sound, yeah. So would you go in there it's a lot to the city? city? No, I was, I was really afraid of New York City uh, growing up in Connecticut because, because it was a big city and there was all these one-way streets and the New Yorkers were tough, you know, and, so I, and it was hard to drive in there, too. Because you had to get on the Merritt Parkway and then get over to uh, all these other freeways and yeah. stuff, and the traffic was going fast, and so I didn't go in there that much. The, really, the first time I went in there on school trips, you know, yeah. to the museum, but the first time I, 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 you know, looked at a comedy club, I drove in there mm -hmm. and I went to see the Catch a Rising Star and the comic strip and um, um, the Improv, and it was just I was like a, a farm boy going into a city, you know. It was just lights and cars everywhere, and you know. <laughs> but um, but but getting back to the uh, genetic thing, I think that um, 
I really am. My body is taking a toll because I played football and rugby and soccer growing up. Yeah. So I have like I got That's a rough. new hip like three years ago. Did you really? Yeah, my right side, and um, my shoulders are like really sore now. I think there's probably arthritis in there, and uh, and then when I pee, I get this pain in my back. It's like a kidney stone. Every pee? No, only kind of like after I worked out or did a hike. Yeah. You know? um, yeah. You'd probably have that checked out. Are you guys doctors? I can yes. do it. Okay. I can do it. No, I did have it checked out. Yeah, what, what were they saying? Well, again, I'm at that age now where they don't find anything wrong. It's right. just a muscle. They're just joint. like, you're dying, man. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you're breaking you're down. Dying. You're decomposing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, but I have had kidney stones before, and that uh, is not fun. I hear that's really bad. Does the juice help? The juice helps. Yeah, no. Um, water helps. A lot of water. A lot of water. Well, not, thankfully, I won't have them. I drink a lot of, of water. Yeah. No Tom salts. drinks brown coffee all day long. Does that help with kidney stones? <laughs> coffee, actually, they say is good for you now, isn't it? Yeah. It's mostly water. That's the thing. Yeah. yeah. It's a diuretic, though. It makes you pee. I thought it was dehydrating. You don't know what that word means. So, <laughs> <laughs> pee. No, you know what pee means. You yeah, know what pee, pee means. But I did get a... Uh, Here's a, here's a word you need to familiarize yourself with. Okay. And you want to avoid this. Okay. It's called a cystoscopy. What's really a cystoscopy? Oh, cystoscopy. God, it what is that? Good. It's what you get after you've had a kidney stone. Mm. It's through the you pee-pee? Go to the urinologist, urologist, yeah. And you don't really know what it is. <sighs> they say it's not pleasant, but <sighs> you'll be okay. <laughs> so, yeah, you sit back and they take a, uh, you know, a tube <laughs> and they oh. numb your penis. Ooh. And um, they didn't have the numbing solution when oh. I was there, so I had to sit on it for like a half hour to make it go to sleep. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> and then they shoved that thing up there into your bladder. Oh, oh. no. Oh, oh God no. damn. Ritual dick cut. Yeah, they got a little ritual dick cut. Hell no. Yeah. Damn, <laughs> yeah. homie. That's... But so anyway, I did that one time, and they found nothing up there. So. How painful was that? <sighs> yeah. You know what? It, it was kind of like, um, even though they numbed it, it was still kind of like, uh, I, I just stopped short of saying, take it out, take it out. Yeah. You know. I had a catheter in one time in the hospital. I was in the hospital, and the nurse tripped. Oh! And it pulled out like, and I was like, oh! And I was oh, like, what the? She was like, oh, I'm sorry, that wasn't supposed to happen. I was like, Don't oh. say anything. Oh, <laughs> don't tell anybody. Breathing, so yeah, no, don't get me fired. Gosh, oh you guys talking God. about all these painful things. I hope I don't have to experience anything painful. <laughs> yeah. Here's yeah. a fun yeah. Here's a fun one. When I was 23, I had a bump on my neck. Yeah. And uh, I went to some doctor back then in Bridgeport, Connecticut. And this is when you could smoke in the doctor's office. Uh-huh. Oh, and great. he was smoking a big cigar. And he reaches so across crazy. his desk. And he feels it with his two fingers. And he goes, okay, what you have here is a uh, a tumor. And when he said tumor... That mixed with a cigar smoke, I started yeah. to get <laughs> narrow vision. Yeah. And I was starting to feel faint. And he looked and he was talking about it and he, and he saw how I looked. Yeah. And he goes, You all right? You want me to open a window? I said, Yeah, please open up a window. So <laughs> I said, The, 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 the tumor thing uh, kind of like pushed a button on me right there. Yeah. I was 23. Of course. Oof. And he goes, Well, I, I call it a tumor, but it's just fatty tissue. It's fatty tissue, but we'll take it out, you know, just to do a biopsy. I'm, I'm sure it's nothing. So I went to the hospital. I just got out of college, you know, and I'm ready for my whole life. Yeah. And um, and they put me in a room with another guy who had just come out of surgery, and they wheel him in. And uh, he starts waking up, and, you know, he's awake, and he's, uh, you know, kind of recovering. And like an hour later, I'm going in the next morning for surgery. <laughs> the nurse comes in and says to him, have you, uh, have you peed yet? And he goes, no, no, I haven't. He goes, okay, well, you're going to have to pee soon, otherwise we're going to have to catheterize you. Yeah. He goes, uh. he says... What, what's catheterize mean? Oh boy! Because well, and she told him. And he said, "Uh, uh-uh, uh, no, that's not going to happen. Yeah. That is, there's going to be a battle in here. I want ginger ale. Give me a lot of ginger ale yeah. right now. Ginger ale, trays of ginger ale." <laughs> and I'm thinking, "Oh, jeez." Oh my god! And then I told him, I said, "Hey, would you do me a favor? When I come out of surgery tomorrow, would you please make sure I drink a lot of ginger ale?" <laughs> <laughs> Jesus, that's what they do to you after childbirth. When I my first son. The minute that epidural wears off, they get around you and they're like, you have to pee. And if you don't, we're going to put the catheter back in. And, oh, my Well, God. you push that pee out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As hard as you can. But that epidural is the greatest, though, isn't it? It's the best. Oh, my I God. do drugs. I love it. My yeah. wife had one at one centimeter. 
Yeah, that's what I'm going to do. Barely at all. That's what I'm going to do. I mean, people are usually one centimeter. I'm one centimeter right now. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) That's what I said. Every time I see my doctor, I go, when do I get the drugs? And he goes, whenever you want. And I'm like, there you go. You know, I think the epidural would be uh, an epidemic, like opioids, (laughs) if it wasn't so difficult to put in with that needle. Right. I know. No, that would be. But you're so grateful for it. I don't even I want to feel what you feel in that. You want to? Yeah. The childbirth or the epidural? Just the epidural. It's it's pretty rad. Yeah, but you just it take is. a nap and stuff, and they yeah. wake you up. And it's it's a time really, to push. you really got to know what you're doing to give an epidural. Like, like when you, yeah. have, if you do a home pregnancy, don't let your husband give you the epidural. <laughs> is that's that right? Not good. Yeah, I've heard. Yeah, I've heard. Oh. Yeah, it's crazy. How long have you been married? Twelve years. Oh wow! Yeah. And we had a couple in here uh, last episode, mm-hmm. and they've been together for six years. And that's they, not going to last. It's not going to last at all. <laughs> they never last. Those young, those. Young. And we were so surprised to find that they don't fart in front of each other. My wife doesn't fart in front of me, at least. What? But do you? My son and I, <laughs> we are creative <laughs> artists. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. love it. We um, we make it a um, entertainment thing. Yeah, you know, like of it's like shooting the gun. Oh yeah, or it's tickling some. You know, pulling the finger kind of thing. That's yeah. the initial yeah. thing. But yeah. we've taken it to new heights. <laughs> You know, we will, uh, you know, lift the leg up yeah. or, or, you know, and whenever I do it, when he's with me, yeah. he outside, like he'll get really embarrassed. Sure. Like he'll look around, make sure nobody's looking. I said, buddy, buddy, I'm a pro, man. I've been doing this for years. No one's around. I love, uh, I love the movements. I, yeah. like, I like to do like yeah. one of these. Tom does a leg kick. Or if I'm in bed, I'll do a kick. I'll kick and I'll do it. But yeah, my wife has never farted. One time she wow. let out a squeaker. But. Now, I'm, I'm imagining you don't like sit on her and fart or something, but... But I mean, like, if you have to My fart, does that to me? <laughs> if you have to fart and your wife's around, like, do you do you leave the room? No, no, no. But she's from the south, so she's very proper. Ah, uh, where's she oh. from? Nashville. Okay, yeah. So, um, you know, she's a southern belle, so I try not to kind of do it around her. Well, uh, so what do you do? You get up and leave the room, or well, you... what I do is I cut back on the sugar because that's what does it. You yeah. like sugar, don't you? Well, of course, and I've tried yeah. to eliminate it. You can't. It's it's uh, I went without it for a long time. How, how long is long? Because I did it for um, six months once. Oh, I did a year. But you know what happens? You uh, congratulations first yeah. of all. Yeah. You go oh, well. Maybe I'll just have a little piece of that scone. Of course. And that's a trigger. It's and a then trigger. It opens up the gate. It's, an, it's like a it's like cocaine. Mm-hmm. Oh, it, you go it crazy. Is, somebody was telling me that if you had um, if sugar was just discovered now, they would never approve it because it would be like too addictive. I I totally believe that. Yeah, and the sugar lobby is massive and so powerful. It's in everything. Spend, it's in everything, and it is like it is a, horrific for your system. It does nothing but damage. Cancer to you. feeds on it. Yeah, you know it's horrible. It's and horrible. you see how much people consume it. It's really crazy. Man. Have you? You know, here's a great thing to do. Yeah. Go to the movie theater, yeah. like on a crowded, you know, s- screen. Yeah, and um, about ten minutes into the film, just walk up in front by the <laughs> screen and look at the audience. They are shoving so much food oh, yeah. and junk into their mouths. And I'm I'm one of those people. You know, and I just, you know, and I say the first 10 minutes because everybody plows through their stuff. I usually finish my popcorn before the trailers are over. Yeah. Most yeah. people, yeah. Like if you get it beforehand, it's the temptation to just go through it. Man. Oh, because the $20 popcorn is so good. Yeah. It's so you know? good. <laughs> and and so I'm such a, a penny counter. I, every time I take a kernel here, <laughs> there's five cents. There's, another, there's 25 cents right there. <laughs> so you're just run, you're running that tab <laughs> yeah, the whole yeah. time? Yeah. Now, I, speaking of cinema, yeah. do you remember, Did you, I don't know how long you've been in L.A. for, but I remember in like the 80s and the late 70s, there was like the Pussycat Theater, which they would show <laughs> pornography in movie theaters. Did you ever yeah. go to one? Like what? We're trying to like we were, yeah, figure out what's about, that like? Basically, we were saying how the theater. money has been driven down for the performers and actors because it used to be in cinema and then people would buy videotapes and DVDs. Now it's like free on YouTube. It's not, you know. Really? People are, well, people are stealing it and just playing it. So... <laughs> Did you ever go to cinema, like to a movie theater? Was that a common thing to do? To see porno? Yeah. No. But I remember Pee Wee Herman that time. Down in yeah, Florida, yeah. Yeah. You know. Um, no, but I've worked in theaters before, and I'm sure you have too, where they say, you know, this used to be a vaudeville thing, yeah. and then the last thing was a porno theater. Yeah, that's they true. They modeled it. You yeah, know, that's and, true. Um, but, um, but I will tell you, I, I used to be a bartender at the improv when I first moved out. That's here. so crazy to me, too, that you're actually one of those, because there's always these stories about, it was just the job I got as I, I was trying to become a stand-up. You know, it wasn't like I was a bartender and then they but said, "Oh, who was be... frequenting the improv when you were?" Um, 
let me tell you. And then remind me about this story yes, about yes, the Scott yes. Theater. Um, I was, I, I first night I walked in there, I knew the improv was the place mm -hmm. in LA. Mm -hmm. So I came out here and I got a job. Uh, I befriended the bartender and he says, hey, we need a bartender for like Sunday money nights. I can get you a job if you want. And I've never bartended before. So I kind of, uh, you know, boned up on that. And I got the Boston bartender's guide and I kept it behind the, the bar. And I refer to it a lot, you know. But um, the first night I went in there to sit at the bar even, I'm, uh, to my right, I'm looking in the mirror and it's this weird looking guy and I'm looking at him and it's Marty Feldman. Oh, I love you know? Marty Feldman. Right? And then there's a guy sitting next to me. We start talking and he tells me he's the original Ronald McDonald. Later, I find Shit. out he wasn't. It was Bob Zamuda, Andy ah. Kaufman's uh, kind of right-hand man. You know, he was just messing with me. Okay. But I would see everybody come in there as I bartended. I would see all these comics I used to watch on the Merv Griffin Show and Mike Douglas and yeah. The Tonight Show and all these, you know, like Dottie Archibald and George Miller and you know Jay Leno and Letterman and everybody. And Steve Martin called one night, said, looking for Bud Freeman. He wasn't in. He wanted to know if he'd come down to a spot. I said, yes, yes. You're on the phone. Yeah. And then I'd see, you know, like, I, and then the, the back room was packed with comics that were had such a charge to them, like, you know, well, like Annie Kaufman would come in, Robin Williams would come from Mork and Mindy with the suspenders on still. And um, and, I'm, and I, I hear myself talking about this now, and it seems like yesterday. Yeah. It seems like yesterday, and sure. all of a sudden we've jettisoned like, you know, 38 years from then. And um, Jay Leno would ride in on his motorcycle, um, uh, Richard Lewis packed, a lot of these expats oh, yeah. would be in the back room, New Yorkers, you know. And then that place, the front bar, became a real hangout for a couple of years. They it was like that dance club. They fucked up so hard with their yeah, remodels. Yeah, they did. That, that was so, so you know, long ago, yeah. So, I mean, but but back in the like the early 80s, it became like a dance hall, you know? Yeah. And, I mean, I remember one night, uh, Roy Scheidner came in with um, um, Bob Fosse from All That wow. Jazz. Yeah. You know, I mean, the people, Timothy Leary came in one night. Really? You know? Yeah, the people that came in there, it was just staggering. That was the see. spot. That was the spot, and I was there at that time, you know, and to see that. Um, but, yeah, there's just so many. Well, it's there. just cool, too, because you know that, you know, you go into any place now, there's so many staff that are like, oh, you know, I'm like if you're going to a comedy club, they're like, I'm, I'm a comic, but I'm, I'm working here, you know, to pay the bills. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that, you know, but obviously for the majority of, in any field, it's not going to work out. It's just the, the way that that whole business works. Right, you know? right. Like you're one of the guys where it really did. It's pretty... Well, yeah, I got to, um, you know, when you start off doing stand-up, you go to as many open mic nights as you can and you watch as much comedy as you can, mm -hmm. you know, on top of what you watched growing up. And then you watch everybody's style and you try to create your own style and get off the one you're emulating. You know, when yeah. I started, you know, I was emulating, well, I loved Andy Kaufman and Albert Brooks and Steve Martin because uh -huh. they were so different. You know, they're so unique. And, yeah. You know, you, you you really couldn't tell where they were going with their bits. And you, you were know. doing your version of that? I was kind of doing yeah. my version of it. And, and I, I always liken comics to, um, like, verbal magicians because it's misdirection. Sure. You know, you're not really, sh you know, they, they try to, part of the laughter is a surprise of what they're about to say, you know, because you didn't think about it. So that. is that where, like, the subliminal stuff came from? The subliminal stuff, uh, interestingly, came from, um, I was getting late night spots at the uh, comedy store. And um, things weren't really working that well. And, um, but I was making friends um, at the club. And not just comics, but actors would come in. And actors I, I would recognize from doing bit parts on shows like Laverne and Shirley and Mark and Mindy and Happy Days, you know, back then. Yeah. And there's this one guy, Ed Peck, would come in. And he was this tall guy with a deep voice like that. He did, but he did uh, low and brow commercials. And, mm -hmm. and he also played a cop character usually on uh, those, those, uh, those TV shows. And he took a liking to me. And, um, we went to Cantor's one night, and he said, I'm going to do a thing called tagging. Tagging? He called it tagging. And it was subliminal, basically, where he would talk to the waitress and insert a subliminal word in there when she wouldn't hear it because he would bury it, you know? <laughs> uh -huh. and, but it would be real profane, you know? He'd say, yeah. like, uh, well, let's see, honey, I think I'm going to have a cheeseburger uh, hooker, and why don't you also give me uh, some french fries with, without your dirty whore? You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So he encouraged me to do it in my act. Uh -huh. So I would. <laughs> so funny. I started doing that in my act. I love it so right much. Night. Thanks, man. And then when I got to SNL, Al Franken kind of um, um, associated with subliminal advertising. You know, and we thought that would be kind of funny to write up a sketch where I was yeah. a subliminal advertising guy, and you know, inserting those words into my conversation to get people to do what I want. And it was the first sketch I did on SNL, and um, you know, it's terrifying enough to go on that show for the first time and do a sketch. But this one had like two conversations going on. And I remember I was about to go on. I'm not sure where it came in the show, but it was my first sketch. 
and maybe only sketch on that show. And we're five seconds away coming out of commercial, and Lorne Michaels comes up next to me, puts his arm on my shoulder, and he goes, are you sure this is what you want? Oh, my God. <laughs> Fuck. Yeah. But, you know, they... It's it's funny the way things people try to make you feel comfortable. Yeah, you know, <laughs> for uh, right. you know a, a pressure situation, but getting back to the Pussycat Theater. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I was a bartender at the Improv. I would usually finish up about two in the morning, two thirty, three o'clock. By the time I counted all the money and made the bank receipts out, and then I had to drop the money off at the bank in a little canvas bag with a lock on it. And I did that one night, and I was driving down Melrose to my one hundred thirty five dollar night apartment down by Paramount, down Melrose. And in front of me, it was kind of foggy out, you know, and mm -hmm. I see this figure walking down the middle of the street. And as I get closer, I see it's a girl in a white dress and she's staggering and she's crying and her makeup is all running. Mm -hmm. And she's she's a mess, a disheveled mess. And she, I can't, you know, she's trying to stop my car. So I slow down and I put my window down just a little bit, you know, because I don't know What's what she's all about. Yeah. yeah. And she um, she's crying and she goes, Roll down your window, roll down your window. So I kind of rolled it down more, you know, and she goes, they threw me out of the car. They threw me out oh of the my car. Gosh. These bastards. And I said, I'm so sorry, are you all right? She goes, yes, could you take me to the, I think it was a Pussycat Theater or it was a Kit Kat Club. <laughs> I think it was a strip club maybe. Uh -huh. And she, I said, oh, oh, okay. And she gets in the car, big mistake. And... I, I don't know where the Kit Kat Theater, there was one on Melrose. I thought yeah. that's where she wanted to go because I would go by it all the time going home. Yeah. But she wanted to go to the one on Santa Monica, I guess there was one. Oh, God. And, uh, and we're driving. And uh, so I get her to the uh, the one on Melrose. I say, here you go. She goes, no, that's not the one. And she's oh, drunk, no. you know. And, and she goes, on Santa Monica. And now I'm thinking, oh, this is a mistake. I said, you know what? I, 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 I'm going to have to let you out here. She goes, I have a gun. <gasps> And I said, where on Santa Monica is it exactly? <laughs> <laughs> but I oh, dropped her shit. off and she kind of fell out of the car and I ran around and picked her up and got her on the sidewalk. Oh, God. And, I mean, it would look bad for me like if I'm dropping her off, like I was yeah. like her job. It's like you're kicking her out of the yeah. car. <laughs> yeah. And then she like, blames me. Who is that guy? <laughs> yeah. But Jesus that's so, Christ. yeah. So when you said the Pussycat Theater, I thought that maybe that was uh, yeah. the year. See, I remember my mother going on a date with a man to the Pussycat Theater. Like really? in the 80s, she was single and she went on a date with a guy. There. Your mom partied. Like she taxi, cool. like taxi driver. Like, doesn't oh, he right. take the lady? Yeah, like, the you want to go see a porno? <laughs> <laughs> like, like, I gotta see that house. movie again. Yeah, yeah. It's so crazy. there's a lot of movies like that. I want to. He's like, anything. what? He's so crazy. He's yeah. like, yeah. took you to a movie. She's like, but my mom um, dated this guy for like ten years after, so obviously dude. it was a good thing. Yeah, of course. Yeah, I was so. She got into stripping. <laughs> I was so influenced by the tagging and subliminal thing. Oh, it's so funny. In, uh, in class, I used to be like, um, so if you, can we carry the four there with the nipple? Like that. And, you know, I would say it like that. And, like, just my friend next to me would, like, turn. And, yeah. She would never carry the nipple, it, you know? The and then she'd be like, yes, of course. And I was like, oh, and then people would start, because they would hear it, you know? But, like, she, she would never pick up on it. It's I so love funny. that stuff. So nipple is such a funny word. Though. Yeah, it is. That's a great word yeah. to use, nipple. I know, like, a Carl Reiner and Mel Brooks were talking about, or maybe it was Carl Reiner talking about, they had to have a number, like, in some script for maybe the Dick Van Dyke show or something. Mm -hmm. Your show of shows, maybe. And they were trying to think of what the funniest number was to say. Hmm. And I think, I'm not sure what it is, but I think he said 43 is the funniest 40. number. 40? I, I thought the cuz, like six, 60 something. Is so the funniest 43. number, huh? I think so, but I'm not sure. But they're 40. It sounds like 40, maybe that's why. 40. 43. 43. 45. 45 is the funniest Irish number. 45. 45 for sure. <laughs> yeah. Well, um, Tom and I do this thing where when we go through the Starbucks drive through, we oh, say, yeah. um, hey, mommy, and then you go in your order. You can call people mommy, like waiter, waitresses or anybody, people, and they don't even pick up on it. People ended up taking, so this is our game, was to go like, hey, mommy, and order <laughs> sure, Starbucks, yeah. and then at the end go, thanks, Jeans, thanks, I jeans. love you. Thanks, then, who? Thanks, Jeans. It's like a, oh. so we call like it a to pet the name. Yeah, yeah. So thanks, Jeans, love you. And they're like, all right, uh, it's 265 at the window. <laughs> yeah. And then we started to tell our <laughs> audience about it, and the whole thing was like, could you, how many, because there's so many inside jokes, like its own lexicon in this, in this show, um, that like how many could you get it? And people, like we played a girl one time who was definitely disturbed, um, and 
she would uh she would say hi to Hitler before she played before she spoke <laughs> she out. She would vlog <laughs> to Hitler. Yeah, that's that not a Tourette thing. <laughs> no, uh, no, that not. would be horrible to have that Tourette syndrome. Like, <laughs> how Hitler? Yeah. Anyway, I, uh, <laughs> this was like that would be a bad one. But but anyways, mm. people would go in and go like uh, or the N word. That yeah, would be yeah. yeah. Well, we did have a documentary about that. Some girl did, did say that big words. We did. She, she she would go to summer camp and, and say that word. Yeah. I'll tell you that you know I have a real problem with drive throughs. Yeah. I cannot resist like doing some screwy character. <laughs> oh yeah. You know when I'm ordering, and even if nobody else is in the car, you know I get in there. Hey, let, 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 let me see. I, I, I'm going to have a, a, two ice cream cones, a, one chocolate, and one vanilla, <laughs> and a medium size. Okay, that's it. Nothing to drink. <laughs> okay, so you're thinking of the vanilla and the chocolate. Yeah, two, 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 uh, chocolate and the vanilla. Two cones, two. One white, one brown. And then uh, I'll drive through and they'll hand it to me. And I'll go, which, which one is the chocolate? Which one is the chocolate? <laughs> and they're like, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, and they'll point it. They'll go, it's this one here, sir, right here. It's that brown one. <laughs> Thank you, mommy. Thank you, mommy. Thanks, mommy. Thanks, <laughs> James. It was really hey, the most. Thanks, people James. start When we started sharing that we did this, people started to uh, make them. Like record themselves doing it, and they would throw in the fucking most insane requests. And the thing that stood out to us is that those drive-through people, so many of them are on autopilot. Yeah. So yeah, no yeah. matter what you're saying, they're just like, "Yes, sir. You yeah, got it. Okay. you got it. Yeah, yeah sure. Yeah. This is a uh, Hitler's order. Here you go. Yeah. Give it to him. It's, uh, the fries are still hot." Yeah, that's the great thing about Starbucks too. You could write anything <laughs> on that cup name. You know? <laughs> yeah. No, oh yeah. God, I was trying to find the, the trying uh, to find the hi mommy thanks jeans yeah the hey videos. Mommies, yeah thanks jeans kind of sounds like it's a regional kind of a thing someone might say like in Minnesota or something you know thanks jeans Here thanks jeans go. found it I think this is it okay can I get a large cheeseburger meal with uh, frozen coke yeah with a frozen coke anything else to play uh plus another cheeseburger yeah so I think that was all was it yep that's it. Oh, yeah, Amazed. Thanks, Jeans. <laughs> hi, mommy. Hi, mommy. Hey, mommy. Hey, Hitler, morning, mommy. Hey, hi, mommy. Hey, Hitler. Hey, mommy. Hey, what's your pronoun? Uh, yeah, one second. I'm just glassing. Let me look for glassing. a second. Uh, How's that shit? Hi, mommy. Can I get a double cheeseburger for Bert, please? Hi, mommy. Can I get a uh, bike egg and cheese on a sub cane bagel? Do you want to make it a meal? Um, no, thanks. I don't want to be fat like Bert. Excuse me, one second. Big round! Put that shit down! <laughs> Sorry about that. But can you do just a little bit of ice? You know what I'm talking about, you feel me on me? Just a little bit of ice? <laughs> For real, still. Can I get a panda bowl with chow mein and the kiss my pussy chicken? <laughs> Sorry, can you repeat that, please? I didn't understand that. Fucking camp. You know what? Let's just make it a meal. I'm sorry. Can we make it a combo? Um, and then that's it, lad. Thanks, James. Right, thanks, James. Great, thanks, James. <laughs> All right, thank you, Hitler. All right, thanks, Jeans. <laughs> thank you, Hitler. That's great. Uh, the kiss my pussy chicken might be the best. <laughs> I know. It's so crazy. That's a good subliminal right uh, there. Yeah, it is, right? <laughs> oh, man, that's the best. That's the best. That's you, you influenced yeah. that. I mean, when we really think about it, you <laughs> yeah. definitely influenced that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. that's fun. Um, <laughs> I was just thinking of something with the drive throughs um, Yeah, it's crazy. I mean, there's people who work all the time, so they're not thinking. No. Yeah, no, they're just like... Yeah, kiss my pussy chicken. Sure, kiss my yeah. pussy chicken. Yeah. <laughs> Which is all, by the way, things that like we have a lady who is in the <laughs> bank, and she <laughs> she just yells out like, "I want my money, god damn it!" Yeah, and then yeah. she just goes, "Kiss my pussy," <laughs> like in Wells Fargo. So we had that drop that would just play for a while. So people would just oh, that's hilarious. I remember the original submission. He goes, "Kiss my p- pussy chicken," and she goes, "Kung Pao chicken." Oh yeah, right. <laughs> so they think like, like you must she be trying it. to say this, Kung yeah, Pao, yeah. yeah. Um, so you've you've been working for a while. Uh, do you have any advice for Johnny Depp? Um, for Johnny Depp? Yeah. So I don't know if you are. Um, yeah, I am. I'm familiar with what's going on. You you read about that or no? Yeah, I think so. Six hundred fifty million dollars he's earned thus far. He go. He burns through a lot of cash. I mean, they said he's nearly broke. He spends in excess of two million a month. Wow. Yeah. Hmm. Well. You know, when you're at his level mm-hmm. and you've had that much money, Oof. I mean, you know what it's like when you start making money? Right. You stop looking at what things cost, right. especially in a, in a restaurant. You know, when you're just starting out, you're like, oh, that's 
twelve dollars, I can get this for eight dollars. I'll have the eight dollar, right? Or I'll just order off the menu and not do the buffet, right? Right. You know? But so I guess at his level, he's it's so long. He knows he's made a lot of money, and he's just a little bit at a time. He starts spending left and right. It's like compulsive. They said it's like a disorder. Well, what were some of the things you listed? Like uh, he Here's shot what, Hunter S. Okay. Thompson's ashes into the that, into space. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, My friend, you know, Dana Carvey says that his biggest fear in life would be how horrible it would be to be famous and broke. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's got to be. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And he's not famous and broke, but he that's that was a thing he thought about a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Were you like really, when you started to make money, were you very, um, you know, aware, like, oh, I got it? Save, I got to keep this, or yeah, you, yeah, yeah, no, because I, you know, I I grew up in a you know, middle income household, mm-hmm. you know, we weren't poor, but we lived in a blue collar like neighborhood and stuff. And I went to public schools mostly, high school, I went to a private school, but um, you know, I paid for my own college, bought my own first car and stuff, so I kind of knew the value of money. I worked in a factory and yeah, uh, you know, washed dishes, all those kind of jobs. So I kind of like, and that's what I want to instill in my kid, too. Like, I hope he doesn't have to work the crappy jobs I did. Right. But I want him to know the value of money. Yeah. Yeah, so um, I'm always kind of aware. You are. Yeah. Oh, wait, but being famous and broke, that's what being on a reality <coughs> show is like. Right. I was that in the right. 90s. Right, right. I did a show called Road Rules back when MTV was, you know, MTV. And it was terrible because people could just have access to you and they're like, hey, you're the fucking girl from so-and-so. And, yeah. and you have no money to like protect or insulate yourself from anybody. Yeah. It's kind of like being a reality star. So, so I still look, you know, I still look at prices and stuff. You do. But, but you know, I don't spend um, crazily. I still, you know, I buy things that I like and I want. Sure. I'm pretty good with the money. It is. Ama- I, this is another thing. I don't know if you think about this, but the longer you do this and you have like some exposure to some success... The more you look at people who've done it for a long time and you're like, man, how do they do that for so long? Like the, the fact know. that you've been, you know, working and, and creating stuff for this long, it's amazing to me. It's amazing to me too. You know, I, I um, but the thing is I love doing it. I love what I do. So it's not, it's not hard, you know, I'm always right. looking for things and just trying to, trying to stay engaged. And I've, you know, I was just talking to somebody about this before. I know a couple of billionaires. Do you? Yeah. And they're, you know, like billions of dollars. And they are really good with their money. They're not like, you know, they're, I won't say they're cheap, but they're very kind of thrifty, uh-huh. you know, and they know they're not going to just throw away a bunch of money to invest in some film or something, you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. Um, they know where it's going. And that's how they became billionaires, I guess. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, Johnny Depp would uh, invest like $4 million in um, so here's, a record label. Here's how, here's some of the spending. Yeah, let's see. Yeah, it. he lost four. Um, first of all, he paid $5.6 million in late fees to the IRS, oh, yeah. which he blames the business manager for. But the business manager says they were always late because he never had enough cash to pay on time. Mm. So that Because he was ripping through cash so much that they would always be late and have to pay penalties and fees. Hmm. Uh, over thirty thousand a month in wine. Alone. Yeah, I heard about that. that makes sense. Yeah, he said that was more than that. Don't <laughs> yeah. insult him. Yeah, he said don't insult <laughs> him. Um, let's see, court documents filed last year. He claimed the actor spent uh, around a hundred million on maintaining his fourteen residences, which include a forty-five acre chateau in the south of France, oh. chain of islands in the Bahamas, multiple homes in Hollywood, several penthouse lofts in downtown L.A horse farm in, in Kentucky. He went to Sing- Singapore and spent 120000 on suits. <laughs> wow. In Singapore. I'm like, really? Is that uh, the place yeah. to get the suits? Yeah. Get them handmade, maybe? Uh, he's collected 70 vintage guitars. He has 14 um, storage facilities for like Hollywood memorabilia here Jeez. in LA. See, it's good that he got divorced. Because yeah. his wife is saving half of his money. Right. He'll have to remarry her later, and at least he'll have some kind of a savings. It's $3 million for sh- firing the uh, the rocket of, uh, uh, what's it called? Ashes. Hunter has taught his ashes into the sky, mm-hmm. which he well, said. Well, that's something he needed to do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now, he, uh, Depp said it wasn't $3 million, It was actually $5 million. Oh, Oh, my goodness. 200 piece art collection, which, yeah, I get why you would do that. He apparently spends as much as 200000 a month just on chartering flights. Um, Worth every penny. Hundreds of thousands of dollars a year to employ a full time sound engineer to feed him lines during filming. Oh. 45 cars he bought. Uh, yeah. 
I don't know. Yeah. It just kind of goes on and on. Yeah, the, the storage facilities, it's like, it's hundreds of thousands. Jeez. Uh, he has a personal doctor. I like that. I'd spend money on that. Million a year. Oh, I, I, I to, to live with you. That'd be, or I do a masseuse. Yeah, two million a year annually for around the clock security for himself and his mother prior to her death. I would hire somebody just to remind me of my passwords. Yeah, yes. <laughs> that would that's be a great, great idea. Um, and let's see. Oh, and a forty-person staff that he keeps. Wow. Damn, um, homie, for more than uh, three people. million a year. Yeah, so it really is really crazy that you can rip through that much money. But. I'm more amazed at how it's got to be crazy to be that attractive. And that famous for that long. Like, yeah. when he was on 21 Jump Street, what, what was he, like, maybe 18 years old or something? Probably, yeah. And, like, he's the guy. Like, I had a poster on my wall, like, a life-size poster of that dude. He's been hot for that long. Like, I know. That's got to be crazy. How, you, crazy. how are you even normal? Like, well, you I can tell be. you from my experience. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> tell us. Um, you just got to come out with creative posters. That's the yeah. whole thing. Yeah. That's what it is. It's not that hard. Yeah. <laughs> just being that You're hot. You're still hot. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, I'm still hot. Yeah. I haven't even peaked yet. Yeah. How much, bu- like, w- was it a thing in SNL to, like, translate the fame of it to crushing box all the time, like, especially in New York? Like, would you guys just be on a tear? Because you were on, I, I think everyone has an era yeah. kind of that they follow the most. Depending right? on their age, yeah. Yeah, depending on your age. Because, like, I couldn't list, I couldn't tell you the last 10 casts of that show. But I know. The especially the early to mid '90s cast real well because yeah. that was the era that I never missed. That right. was must see TV, and when you were on, uh, but you were on with like fucking Farley, Sandler, Rock, and all those guys were on during your era. Right, right. Was chasing tail like a big part of life for you guys? <laughs> uh, for those guys, it was for Sandler and, and oh, Farley really? and those guys. Yeah, but I was, you know, I think um, by then I was married. Oh, you were. You know? I okay. mean, the first couple of years I wasn't married. I was dating Jan Hooks. For, yeah, for a couple of years. Yeah, and then I was dating another girl in L.A. I'm in New York for like six months, and then I got married. You know, so okay. I didn't really have that much uh, singular freedom. You know, on that show, you're the marrying kind. I am. I really yeah, am. I, can I, see I like that, that kind of uh, stability. Me too. Um, I like monogamy. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, Kevin uh, leads with it. I mean, when I met him, he was like, "Just so you know, I'm married." Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> what what kind of jobs did you have before you were a stand up? Okay. Um, right before I moved out here, I was a researcher for America's Most Wanted, the television show. Were you? Yeah. So Sorry. I would. How do you uh, research pay. that? So they would just give you, um, you know, potential. You've heard this story before. And she's like, I'm out. <laughs> so they'd give you potential crimes uh, or crimes and potential suspects. Find out more, and then you pitch the um, basically the editor of the show uh, not like editor like written editor but you know like the like the like the like a newspaper editor style it's how okay. we get yeah, like yeah. a bullpen and we would pitch this guy I guess he's an executive producer so we would just go like hey I got this guy he's a fucking rapist he's in Costa Rica he, he skipped out on bail could be really good sh- like it was really dark stuff you know like i read his whole diary he's really fucking horrible yeah i think we should do this one and then i would you try to make your case for why it would be uh a good a good guy to profile i did and, that for and, a while and did you make money on commission on that yeah if they got him you get points <laughs> nice, yeah nice. no so that was um that was i don't know that was but as a like a teenager or your early oh i mean 20s? i did uh i fucking i remember i was telling her the other day, because they're they're redoing a bathroom here, and they're gonna put some tile in. Nice. And I go, man. When I was uh, in in high school, my my friend's dad bought these apartments, they're like a shitty area. And this is in Florida, South Florida. In the summer, we had to relay tile in all of them with no air conditioning. Oh, in the summertime, it was the worst. fucking brutal, yeah. man. Mosquitoes. I did that. Um, I worked at Granger, the industrial supply place in college. Oof. Just doing menial office stuff. Yeah. Then when I got out here, I was a transcriber for reality shows. You transcribe everything someone says. Wow, you're a good typist? I mean, I'm okay. I don't know. It's <laughs> fucking it's not worth celebrating. Uh, yeah. Then I was a post coordinator. Then I worked at a restaurant for a little while um, on Sunset, a place called Chibo. I worked there for a little while. Then, uh, um, Chibo or Chipo? 
Chibo. 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 Okay. Chibo. <laughs> then I was a site rep, which was actually one of the. What's most... a site rep? So let's say you own um, whatever your house, and you're like, I want. Oh, that would be great. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you go. I want productions to be able to shoot here. Oh, I see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. when you do that, the company that represents your house sends a rep to make sure the production doesn't destroy your house mm-hmm. because yeah. they will. I know. I and, know it. And like I would I would be working in a fucking historically protected church and I'd see a guy like don't don't like nailing into the wall I'm like what the fuck are you doing? He's like we need to hand this fucking light here. I'm like dude, you can't nail and they would just always play stupid and I'd have to run around and like try to tell somebody don't let that guy do that you're like the SAG representative it was horrible oh yeah horrible. there's a there's a house in my, my neighborhood where they're always shooting commercials there yeah and I know that thing's gotta be just torn up by torn now up. but they pay well when you get they the real well. productions in there yeah but they also protect it a lot they put a lot of that stuff down on the floor and, they you do know. but but I've worked know. in homes before other people's homes and you know yeah I'm using their bathroom yeah. I'm not using the porta potty no <laughs> yeah. I'm I'd step over that yellow crime tape thing. For sure. Yeah. People don't give a fuck, man. No. And then it's, but the best business is when you own a building. It's not necessarily a home, but just a building. Yeah. And it's perfect for shooting for whatever reason. Oh my God. They rake it in. Oh, I'm sure. You know, yeah. it's like you just get like a fee, like you're a talent for your building. Maybe we could make a lot of money by just <laughs> building a, a, a building that was perfect for a lot of different shoots. Why don't we do that? Out. What are we waiting for? Dude, you know who has one of those? Who? Sorry to jump in on that. Yeah. Yeah. Do you know the guy Crazy Gideon? Yeah. He owns two buildings in downtown LA Mm -hmm. that I've shot stuff in. And it is that. They're like, it's a huge building full of different, is that what you're talking about? Sorry. Mm -hmm. I'm assuming so. Different scenarios. Like one's like a cop station. um, One's like a nice hotel. Remember the, was it the Herald or the, the, uh, it used to be a newspaper building downtown. And then they have building sets in there. And then that, so the, oh yeah, yeah, that big that big building down that there big, by the freeway. Yes, and yeah. so you could, you could actually use the the old school newspaper bullpen look. Then they built a fake courthouse mm-hmm. in there, yeah, jail cell, great. all these things. I shot uh, a movie called Grandma's Boy down there. Oh yeah, mm-hmm. in that building, that was part of it. Nice. That's where the money is, man. What are we waiting for? I know. Why are we doing this stupid joke shit? Jeez, suck. Wait, before I forget, why aren't we managers? We That's should, they the make truth. the money. Oh my god. I love that manager. Like it was funny because I went to her taping. She did a, a Netflix thing a few weeks ago, and I show up and I'm like, "Oh, when you're not recording, but you're at one of these things, you never feel the stress." You know, like, <laughs> like I showed up and she was like, "She's like, oh, you know, I'm just going over my stuff." I'm like, "It's fucking great. Just, uh, <laughs> just enjoy it. You know, have fun." I started yeah. talking like managers do. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Feel it. like you don't no. feel it at just all. Just have fun out there. Yeah. Yeah. Let's just have fun out there and be yourself. Can I ask you, Kevin? So, when you did SNL, you know how, I don't know, where does it hit you when you get nervous? Like, what do you do? Well, here's what my um, psychology was on that show. The first time I did it, the year we came out, I came out with Phil Hartman and Dana Carvey and Fuck. Jan Hooks. Jesus and Nord- Christ. And all those, I mean, those people, yeah. And um, heavy hitters, man. The show before that, also had a good cast, but the synergy wasn't there with the writing. You know, it, it was like Robert Downey Jr., Anthony Michael Hall, I think Julia Louise Dreyfus. You know, it was a great cast, but the, the writing wasn't there, and the show was plummeting, and they were about to cancel it. <coughs> Excuse me. So they brought our cast in. That's kind of a last resort, I guess. One more chance. And so we lived out of our suitcases, like, every week. We weren't sure if it was going to get canceled or not. You know, so we were doing our best. And... This was a consideration for me. Am I going to like just freak out because of the stress and being on stage? It's SNL, you know. So what I did was, <clears throat> excuse me, I I pretended that nobody was watching the show anymore. You know, mm-hmm. nobody's going to watch it, and this is going to be the only show they're going to do. Then they're going to cancel it. So you know, just go out there and have fun. <laughs> so that was my mindset, and I thought the cameras hadn't, didn't have film in them. You know, mm-hmm. and um, and I was used to playing in front of a live audience from stand up. Sure. And that audience is not that big there. It's only like 300 people. And so it was kind of fine. And then the next day I found out a lot of people watched. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> was that um, was there a particular sketch where you realize um, the next day or the next week that, oh, this has made me way more famous? Like because you're walking around and people are. Well, yeah, um, it was my first sketch subliminal. Oh, subliminal. Yeah. I just came out of the gate with that. And I wasn't even a cast member. I was a feature player the first year and a right. writer. 
So, you know, I was walking around with Jan Hooks, who was an amazing, you know, sketch player, impressionist, everything. I, yeah. mean, I, I really, I mean, she's right up on the top of the list right there for everybody that's been on that show. And people weren't recognizing her. And I was getting recognized. Wow. Stand up. Who yeah. had no experience as a cast, you know, as a you know, a sketch player or characters or anything, you know, and I was getting recognized. So wow. that kind of was baffling her a little bit. So <laughs> yeah. you knew it was a good sketch then. It, it was a it, good. It sketch. hit a nerve, and and people thought it was funny. And was Fever Pitch of Fame from that doing like the? Uh, well, obviously, Weekend Update's got to make you. You're in people's faces. But that came later for me, though. I had done like uh, I had done five years. At that, on that point, show okay. without doing Weekend Update. Oh, okay. I did Weekend Update for three years, and then a year not doing it. <clears throat> but um, it, it was interesting to watch the um, the evolution of being recognized. You know, sure. Because I had done like the Tonight Show and Letterman and stuff as a stand up, so I had some recognition. But with when Carson, I got on, yeah. Fuck. When I got on SNL, what? though, it was like um, it just took off, especially in New York City. You know, you kind of felt like the mayor. But you know, it, it went from this like. Uh, uh, hey, you that dude from NBC? <laughs> hey, did that dude? You that dude from NBC, right? Yeah. And then the next week, hey, uh, hey, you Franz and Hans. You guys are Hans and Franz. That's Hans and Franz. I'm just standing there alone. Hey, you're Hans and Franz. And then it's, uh, hey, Kevin Nielsen. Kevin yeah. Nielsen <laughs> from uh, <laughs> SNL. And then it was yeah. Kevin Nealon, you know. And now it's comes back the other way. <laughs> uh, but Hans yeah, and like, Franz was a oh cultural. Oh my god! I mean, we did it on the schoolyard. Hans and Franz. Yeah, a lot of people in like Halloween Every... costumes and stuff. Dude, and it was like astronauts were doing it in the space shuttle. But that that, yeah, that, was that crazy. is the era where when we would go to school on Monday, you know, yeah. it would be re- people would be reciting sketches. Yeah. And well, that like, sketch in particular oh, was sure. like, oh. and that's exactly why when I was doing Weekend Update, people I realized didn't like to write. For weekend update, the the writers didn't like to write specifically for weekend update because it wasn't a glorifying job. Like on uh, Monday, nobody was talking about, "Hey, did you hear about that? Did you hear that Bush yeah. joke or <laughs> right, whatever right. that Clinton joke?" You know, they and so they had to entice them to come write jokes for me. Oh wow! They would put out a breakfast spread, like a buffet in the for writers' that. wing oh. on Saturday morning, and they'd have newspapers all over the big writers' table, and you know, and AP photos because there's no Google back then. You know, so. Um, I feel, by the way, that it's super intimidating of all the things to do weekend update. It is. It really is. It's a lot of pressure, right? It is a lot of pressure. Uh, but people would come up. You know, a few writers would come up. The newer writers would come up who weren't that good. And then some of the other writers, like Al Franco, would always come because he was a, such a political junkie. Yeah. You know? And um, and Norm McDonald would come up, but he would come up just to have breakfast and read the paper. <laughs> <laughs> and then so I had to, like, hire people outside the show to fax me in jokes. And yeah. I would pay them out of my own pocket, 50 wow. bucks a joke. What? Wow. Yeah, I mean, it was important to me to do yes. well on Weekend Update. And uh, and then I'd write my own jokes, too. But you couldn't, you really couldn't start looking to write material until Friday night, maybe, after the late night talk shows were done, you know, because oh they're, they're covering everything. So Saturday morning, it's like you wake up and you get like five papers and you start looking through them and you start writing jokes and... You know, and hope that the writers come up with something. Now, did did it because you were busy with Weekend Update? Would that buy you the freedom to not have to do uh, like if you're like? No, I was also writing sketches for myself. Fucking a man. Yeah, and I was in other sketches. Dennis did a great job. Uh, Miller on Weekend Update did it, I think, for seven years, and he was fantastic. But he wasn't really in a lot of sketches, you right. know, so he could focus on that. I was juggling. You know, I, I wasn't my full focus, and I was working with Herb Sargent, who was a segment producer of that show, and he was up in his seventies. You know, and, yeah. And um, and I would meet with him like uh, in between um, the dress rehearsal show and the live show, and go over the jokes that worked and didn't work, and you know, and then I had to get back down to like work on my sketch, and and so I go back out to Weekend Update during the live show, and some of the jokes that we had talked about losing were still in there because he didn't because either he wrote them or he liked them, and mm. and I didn't really realize it until the next morning. I'm laying in bed, kind of going over everything, you know, and thinking that joke wasn't supposed to be. So he knew that I was not focused and he could do kind of <laughs> wow. sometimes, not all the time, but sometimes yeah. he would do that. Yeah. Yeah. So it was, um, but it was fun. I loved it. I loved um, Saturday nights were just, they went so fast, you know, and I always avoided like the parties, the after parties. You did? Yeah. At first they were fun, but 
then it became more of just a, a thing for your guests to go to. Oh, I got you. Because you were exhausted from work and you didn't want to be out till like five in the morning. Because they must be, Sunday. right? Yeah, they must be till late, uh, last oh, late. Oh, yeah, because you know you don't get there until after the show and the show ends at one o'clock. Mm -hmm. And then by the time you're clean up and everything, getting yeah, limos, we each had our own limo that would take us to this different restaurant each night, each Saturday. And then, you know, because that was a big deal for your friends that were in. The guests were the biggest problem on that show. You worried about them getting their seats when mm -hmm. you should have been focusing on your sketch or whatever. Yeah. You worried, that, did they get in okay? Are they in? Okay, you're okay? You okay? Good, good, good. Oh, right. Okay, yeah, I'm going to meet you down by the limo afterwards. Okay, okay, we're going to go to the party. It's so annoying. It's so yeah. worse. It's the and then the parties weren't even really parties. I mean, they were fun, but, they, you know, it was at a restaurant, and you go there, you sit at your own table with your guests, and their necks were craned the whole night looking, um, you know, at celebrities. And then you pay the bill for everybody. And then you get home at like four in the morning and then you, you're wasted on Sunday. You're only free day. Yeah. And That's they, what I'm always curious about. With the, so is Sunday is your one down day and yeah. you just, uh, you must just collapse on a Sunday, right? Like do you even get out of bed? I get out of bed. Yeah. Cause, um, because I, I, I love that it's a free day and I want to, don't want to waste it, you know, but I'm exhausted, you know? And the next thing you know, it's Monday yeah. Uh, evening and you're meeting with the next host for the, ne for the uh, new show the next it's week. It's an exhausting schedule. <laughs> it is. But it was great. I had fun. You know, I was young at the time and I, I could I could handle it. And, Did you have uh, a least favorite uh, guest that you don't mind? I didn't about? like any of them. Really? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, not really. Everybody was really on their best behavior. People ask me that, who was the worst host? But everybody is terrified. And so they're on their best behavior right. and they want to be your friend. So they're making friends. It's like you were like, you know, in the battle somewhere with somebody. You want to, hey, watch out for my back. But that, you know? that must be so intimidating to walk in and they're like, you're doing oh. SNL this week. Oh, I know. And, and, especially yeah. the actors that weren't used to live performing. Sure. You know, like the film actors. Yeah. They were terrified, some of them. And um, I felt for them. But uh, the first one I did was with Sigourney Weaver. Mm -hmm. The very great. first one? First one. And, um, and I remember it was such a hard week. It's so much work because, you know, you're putting everything into it. You want to, you know, it's like your last show you're ever going to do. And I remember at the end of the week she was saying goodbye to everybody. And I thought, wow, she gets to go on with her life and do other things. <laughs> yeah. And I'm staying here with yeah. another week like that. <laughs> nine, nine years of those. Nine years? Nine yeah. years? Yeah. Maron. Maron. That's a Maron. long time. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, when I see those people that hosted, every one of them from those nine years, even some of the musicians, were like best buddies. It's like they, they remember and they yeah. know you because it was such a moment for them. Sure. You know, a bonding. Um, and just everybody that's been on that show. It's like a lifelong friend. Where, oh, before I forget, you're going to San Francisco? I'm going to Cobbs in San Francisco. This oh, wait, is it this week? This it weekend. Forget no? It. <laughs> this won't air, yeah. So, how okay. was San Francisco last week? <laughs> um, I'll be at the Helium um, Funny... I'll be at the Helium... Uh, what's it called? Helium Comedy Club. Which Helium city? Co Portland? I'll, I'll be at the Helium Comedy Club in Philadelphia. Philly, that's a great one. Oh. Yeah. Uh, when is that? That is going to be... I can pull it up. You could edit this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me see. Kevin... You're, it's Kevin Nielsen? Uh, it's the guy from S from uh, SNL. NBC. NBC, yeah. Let me see. He's going to be there August 9th, 10th, and 11th. Um, that's Kevin. This is you, right? Yeah. 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 Kevin Nealon, uh, 9th, 11th, and then. In Annapolis the next day. Yeah. Ram's Head on stage. What's that? Yes, sir. It's a theater. It's really nice. They have one oh. in Key West, too. Check you out. Okay. Check it out, right? Yeah. Um, before I forget, though, you have to tell us about Carson and what that was like. Oh, I feel like as comics, we got gypped on the late night. We didn't get to do anything cool. Well, when I first started doing stand-up, Johnny Carson was the game in town. You know, he was really the only late night talk show. And that's what you, uh, you know, wanted to do. And that's like passing your bar exam as a lawyer, yeah. you know, for a comic. So everybody wanted to get on the Tonight Show with Johnny, and it was getting near the end of his run. So I was, you know, everybody was getting a little desperate. You know, they wanted to get in there. Sure. At least when I came on the scene, and so Jim McCauley was the talent coordinator at the time, and he would come into the clubs. He'd be around the clubs, you know, watching different people. Whenever he was in the room, it was a heightened um, anxiety because the comics knew that he was there, and some people would cancel because they didn't want him to see him. Mm. Wow. Uh, or some would want try to get on so they could see him. Yep. And I think I auditioned maybe twice for him where I didn't make it. And I was so nervous. I'd only been doing stand-up um, for, you know, four or five years. 
And I had sweat running down the back of my legs. Oof. I was so nervous. And I, I, I never could pass the audition for The Tonight Show. And Wait, did he give you notes? Was it was he um, that kind of a guy? Sometimes that he you... did. Sometimes he did. Uh, some he didn't really for me though. But I remember at the Improv at the time, if you were on the Tonight Show, everybody would be in the club that night, and they'd be watching it on the TV over the bar. Mm. You know, just the one TV, mm -hmm. and it, the room would get quiet. You know, you bring out the comic who would be working at the Improv. You know, as a regular. And the comic would come out, and people would just be cheering, and they'd be applauding. Wow! And so. I auditioned again for him, but it was for another show. It was for the Mike Nesmith show, the guy from the Monkees, you know, mm. the band. He was a producer. And I thought, well, this time, and it was Jim McCauley, the same talent coordinator, um, was casting for the Mike Nesmith show and also the Tonight Show. So I thought, I'm going to do the material I think makes me laugh um, for the Mike Nesmith show. Yeah. And I don't care about Jim McCauley or the Tonight Show. And... I get a call from him the next day saying, good news and bad news. Uh, the bad news is we don't think you're right for the Mes Mike Nesmith show, but <sighs> we loved your set and we'd love for you to do the Tonight Show with Johnny Carson. Oh. And I almost dropped the phone. Really? Can you do it on Monday? This was Friday. Oh. Oh. And I was going on my way to Houston to do a, a comedy club there that weekend. Oh, shit. Man. And um, so, you know, you got to do five minutes. So I would do my five minutes like in front of my real set. And all I would do... 24 7 for those three days was go over my act oh yeah just the over and over act, yeah. over and over. i could be talking to you now you think i'm listening to you yeah and you're i'm just, nodding i'm going mm -hmm. over my act in my head yeah and i had been to the tonight show a lot of times when i first came out to la i would go there because the tickets were free and i knew the i knew the routine you go to the guest relations building they give you a ticket and you come back at you know 3 30 you get in line and it was like watching a vegas show every night i saw so many people there i knew exactly what the format was I knew that Fred DeCorvid, a producer, would come out and talk to the audience. Doc Severson would come out. You know, I knew the, the song the band played. Johnny would come out, say a quick hi, and then they'd start the show. So I knew exactly what I was getting into. So smart of you to do that so you weren't nervous for, well, or as nervous. Yeah, whatever. as nervous yeah. maybe. But um, so Monday rolls along, and I, I, I'm on my way. I'm driving out to The Tonight Show. I can't believe it. And I park, and I see Johnny's car parked in a spot there right by the entrance. I walk by it. And my heart's just like beating like crazy. And I go to my dressing room and um, I get into my, my, you know, my suit, my jacket and tie. And I go into makeup and Johnny stops in real quick and he wishes me good luck. And I can't believe it. That was Johnny Carson. And, <laughs> and now Jim McCulley's there, the talent coordinator. And I'm behind the curtain. Oh I know the God. band is playing. I know every member of that band because I watched them so many times. And they're coming back from commercial about to bring me out. And Johnny introduces me. And the curtain opens up, and they're applauding, and I go blank. I can't <gasps> think of my act at all. No! I can't. I can't think of the opening line at all. I don't remember oh. any material. And I'm walking out, and I know the floor is shiny black, you know, and the band is finished, and oh. you know, there's still saliva dripping out of the trombone player's instrument, and um, and they're applauding still, and I'm standing on my mark, and oh. the last clap ends, oh. and it came back to me, oh. and I started doing my act. And I started getting laughs, laughs, applaud breaks, you know, laughs. And I hear Johnny laughing at Ed McMahon back there over my shoulder. I don't look, though, because that's not cool. And, um, and I'm thinking to myself, as I'm doing my act, I'm on The Tonight Show. I'm doing The Tonight Show. And I know my material so well, you know, by rote. I don't even yeah. have to think about it. Yeah. I'm just doing it. And I'm thinking, I'm on The Tonight Show. Mm. I'm on The Tonight Show. <laughs> and uh, it ends and they applaud. And it, and, and it was supposed to be five minutes, but because there's so much applaud breaks and it went like eight minutes, I get behind the curtain. Johnny gave me the, you know, the signal, great job. And I go <sighs> behind the curtain. And I'm thinking, I did The Tonight Show. And Jim McCulley's back there, all smiles. He said, you great. You did great. It's happening. I think Johnny's, don't go away, Johnny, I think wants to talk to you. Uh, because it went a little long and they don't have time for the last guest, so he wants you to come out to the panel. And he goes, what can we talk about? And I felt like saying, get out of my way, Johnny wants to talk to me, you know, I don't need <laughs> yeah. you anymore. Yeah. But he goes, oh, don't worry about it, you got plenty of stuff. So I went out there and I had extra stuff that I hadn't talked about. And it was like, I was like in heaven. I never had experienced this before. Nothing like that, even with SNL and Weeds, any of those shows. And I'm sitting there and I'm doing, he's setting me up perfectly without even having any, you know, uh, questions. They just fell into place. That's how great he was. And I remember him throwing his head back, laughing, a little smoke still coming out from a cigarette from the break, you know, and for 30 years of smoking, you know. And I got off of the show and I was floating. 
Mm-hmm. I felt like I was injected with some kind of uh, drug that n- has never been like experienced before, and it was a natural high. I've never had that again. But you know, and I went home or to my friend's house, who I used to write with, and we just waited, and we just. We sat there with smiles on our face, you know, just smiles, smiles. And then it aired, and I watched it with a pillow in front of my head. But I knew <laughs> everybody was at the improv watching, like I used to watch everybody yeah. else. Mm. Yeah. And I still have the answering machine tape from my answering machine. No. All the comics that called Whoa, afterwards. Oh, that's so cool. And all the people that kind of got in touch. Oh, oh, dude, you had a home run. You got the couch. You got applause breaks. Not only that, I started dating the girl that I bumped, the actress, <laughs> on after me. Really? Yes. What? For six months we dated. It was like Jesus a home run in Christ. every way. That's so. But dude, yeah, never kind of like you um, took me on such an emotional. Role I know. I totally, totally feel story. it. It was uh, to, like I said to to this day. It was the highlight of my. Career. I thought literally wow. for a, for a moment you were about to say, and I couldn't remember, and then I couldn't do stand up. <laughs> <laughs> and Johnny came over and he was like, "The fuck are you doing?" On the show? I was so scared that you. But you know, at, at that time, you didn't even have like bullet points on a cue card next no. to the camera, which they let you do now. They don't yeah. even. Oh, they didn't even give you cue cards for your act. No, you oh you God. just and I had. I didn't even have my notes in my pocket. You know, I was Shit, just man. going. I was I'll say going. this: the uh, one of the times I did stand up on, I think it was on Conan, maybe the first time when I was behind the curtain, I go. How much time do I have? <laughs> and I meant before I they bring me out. <laughs> yeah. right. So the guy. Oh no! Yeah, the guy goes. No. He goes. He wants to know how much time he has. And I see uh, him radio. You're like done. And he goes. You have like five minutes. Oh, and I'm like, no. all right. So I'm like, oh, I have shit. five. I have five minutes to stand here and contemplate. And I was starting to get like, you know, anxiety. <laughs> yeah. I got five minutes. And then I just hear like. And he's like, ladies and gentlemen, my next guest. And I was like, hey, motherfucker, you just said five minutes. He's like, no, you're uh, right now, right now. And then, it, But it was like it threw me into walking out with like a panic, you know. But oh, yeah, it was yeah. okay because, I don't know, I was able to just kind of regroup. But I remember thinking like I have five minutes to stand here and I, have that ruined like 10 seconds oh, later. That's mm. a surprise. I thought it was going to go the other way. How much time do I have? You got two minutes. Oh, two minutes. I thought they said five. Oh, my God. Out. And then you cut it short. You cut your act. Like, like I did a minute and a half. You know? Oh, God my damn. gosh. <laughs> that would have been horrible. Um, I'm so envious of you, though, to have that, because that really is like the that was it, to, to get Carson that's and to have the couch and to, uh, it was. to make it through that hoop was like, oh, my gosh. It was such gosh. a great thrill for me. And I don't know how many times I did that show. I mean, some people know exactly, like Tom Dreesen, they know exactly what, the What, The Tonight number. Show? Yeah. And I don't know how many times I did it. And I... I did it with a lot of guest uh, hosts too, and I think, I think he stopped having me on his show after one of my appearances there, because I didn't know he had a DUI, you know. Yeah. And I came out. It was around the holidays. And I said my opening joke was, "I'm getting ready for the holidays." I don't know about you, but I'm getting ready for the holidays. I've been doing a lot of drinking and driving, you know. <laughs> and I finished my set, and then. Um, <laughs> Now there would be, by the way, a think piece about Kevin. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, God, yeah. But Jim McCauley, the coordinator, calls me and goes, um, I, w- the opening joke, um, we didn't go over that. I said, oh, oh yeah. I, b- believe me, I, never, I don't throw anything in at the last minute. That was part of the uh, set. He goes, yeah, that was, you know, because I, when I watched it, they, they garbled it all up. They did? What? Yeah, my opening joke. It says, I don't know about you guys, but I'm getting ready for the holidays. I've been doing a lot of blah, 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 blah. What? And I thought, what was that? And and then I find out that Johnny had a DUI and you know there's a oh lot of problems with that gosh. and and I and I don't specifically remember but I that may have been my last time on the Tonight Show with he Johnny was Carson. I mean they, they there was a, a number of stories about how you don't cross him he would like Joan Rivers like, in any way it perceived yeah cross. believe me had I known he had a DUI I never would have done that you know <laughs> but um, but I don't even like to, I, I cringe when I think about the conversation he might have had with. Macaulay afterwards, you know, my idol, like, say, what the hell was that all about, you know? Right. Well, look, speaking of smiles, I got a fucking... Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Uh, We're kind of obsessed with dental care. Yeah. You have a very nice smile. Thank you. I know that you know that already. I know it because I've been in the dentist chair for half of my life. Really? Yeah. Really? What? Tell us the dental stuff. 
Oh, I've had, you know, when I when my teeth came in when I was eight, I fell on a, you know, a pavement and I broke them both. Ooh. One of them died, got all brown. Oh. So I've had like, you know, crowns on the front. Really? You know, mm. Yeah, so that. And, uh, you know, I've had six root canals. Six? Two implants last year. God damn. Yeah, so I've been in the dentist chair a lot. Wait, yeah. where, which teeth were root canal? Is it molars back? Mostly molars in the back. Yeah. And then one of the front yeah. ones because I killed it. You know, I died. It, it died yeah. So these two are it. fake? Well, the the crowns. The crowns. Yeah. Those are You're nice. The little though. nubs underneath them. Yeah, it's yeah. It's really good. I remember when you got your, they, they nubbed you down. Remember? When yeah, you... I got the nubs too. These front two are veneers because I knocked out half of this one as yeah. a kid. I know it's a pain in the ass when you knock out your teeth for the rest of your life. You have to replace them. I felt or bad deal for my parents or my mother, especially. Oh, I would have freaked. You, just, you know, when your kid knocks out his teeth well, as soon as he has them. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. So I've been in a lot of dentist chairs. I've had a lot of Novocaine in my. In fact, when I went to audition for uh, Man with a Plan, the show I'm on now with Matt mm -hmm. LeBlanc, mm -hmm. <clears throat> I had a chemistry read with him. I was at the dentist that morning. I was at that with you, by the way. Were you really? Yeah, I was at the, um, like when they first were seeing people for I that came show. in like at the end when they, could, you know. But when they were first, yeah, when they were first seeing people, I'm saying, I remember I parked next to you and I didn't really know you and I was going to a, a reading. Oh, I saw you. I remember you. Yeah, there was, it was yeah. a while ago. You had a bigger a beard at the time, I think. Yeah, though. yeah, yeah. Probably a bigger body too, but <laughs> I remember because I ran into. Um, I definitely remember you because I mean I remember one of the three arts guys. I remember was walking around. I remember he like, was talking to me, and then he was like, oh, <laughs> "Kevin, how really? are you?" Like that, yeah, like that. So. <laughs> <laughs> but my mouth was all numb with Novocaine at that thing. at that thing. Yeah, because the, they had more work they had to do than they thought, and I barely got there in time. I was like zipping over Laurel Canyon trying to learn my lines. And I go in and uh, and I read with, uh, you know, in the side room with Matt LeBlanc. He comes in. Hey, you want to read the lines a little bit? I say, yeah. yeah. And uh, my mouth is all like, I can't, can't move the side. I'm just trying to do my best, you know. And and then he said later, he told me later, he go, well, go into the producers. And he said, uh, they said, how was he? He goes, oh, you know, he's pretty good. His timing's good. But, you know, I think he might have had a stroke. Oh. <laughs> no, His that's not true. But, but it was like kind of really numb. But I do remember seeing you there. I wasn't, but I remember thinking, man, I hope, I hope he... Uh, I hope he has a good audition, you know, because I, I really, I, I feel for anybody who's going in for an audition because I know how, how stressful it is. So stressful. Um, well, I mean, you must have had a good audition because you got the part, right? So Yeah, I did get the yeah. part now that I think about it, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yes. But you would have been great out. Too. You worked out. Um, do you floss? Yeah, I you, do. Yeah. I what floss. about the uh, pick? Do you do the water pick thing too? I don't do the water pick because we just got a bidet. Need a <gasps> toilet seat. I love and that bidets. shoots up some nice streams of water. <laughs> <laughs> but I do floss. But somebody, my friend, you know, who uh, likes to kind of like give me information to debunk what I'm doing. Yeah, says I just read a report where they say flossing doesn't help. Oh That's bullshit. bullshit! Yeah, it's That's gotta bullshit. be. Even if it doesn't help, it gets the food out from between your teeth. It yeah. can get old and smelly. Yeah, because I don't brush. I just floss. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> Now wait a minute. How we're big fans of the built-in bidets. How how happy are you with it? Well, I got it for my uh, wife for her birthday, mm -hmm. which is a lot better than the Porta John I got her for Mother's Day the year <laughs> right? before. She did not like that. No, not yeah, at all. She was insulted, but um, loves it. She loves it. I don't use it that much. What? Oh my gosh. Yeah, because uh, I use the office, the bathroom in my office, but. Uh, I did sit on it a few times. I love the heated uh, seat. Heated That's seat's nice. nice. But it's got a mind of its own. It's going up and down all night long, yeah. and there's yeah. water fizzling out and stuff. Yeah. And and sometimes when I'm going to the bathroom, the seat will go down automatically, yeah, and I got to hold it up, you know. But it's a great, uh, it's a great machine. It's I got love it. all different speeds. I don't know if yours has the speeds that we have. We have different speeds. We have a few. We have a Toto Washlet 350E, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and then this company Bio Bidet sent us one. Uh, uh, really? A Washlet here, yeah. Well, our, ours is uh, Black & Decker, so our highest speed is fracking. Yeah, so you yeah, can fracking really. Fracking and hydro jet cleaning. I mean. <laughs> and fire hydrant. And nothing says level. romance, but your wife must be like, wow, he's really. Yeah. So, you know, we when our guests come over, we don't tell them. You're just like, and all of a sudden, they got water shooting up their ass. Yeah, it's nice. Yeah. I love it. I put on high pressure. Yeah. But, you know, I nobody like comes out of the bathroom. They're in there for hours. <laughs> Our water bill has really gone up. Has it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But those are a great invention. They really are. I recommend it for anybody. Yeah. Wash the chocolate away. Save money on <laughs> toilet paper. Yeah, for sure. That too. Um, anything else, Gene? I don't think so. Um, we had a lot of fun. Coming. We had some good memories from this yeah. show. This was great, man. Yeah. I would love for you to come back again and do it again. 
Oh, I think we lost. <laughs> no, that would be great. No, I would love it. I would love it. You ever travel? Like, do the show traveling? We, we did years ago. Now it's just like know. closer to my house. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll do that. Yeah, do you want us to do it at your house? But do you ever do it at a comedy club? We have. Yeah, yeah. And that wasn't satisfying, or it's fun. It's fun. It's just um, I don't know. It just feels like. And then you got to cart everything over there, right? Yeah, we got to bring like computers and have sound checks, and I don't know. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I just you. like doing it in the studio. Yeah, why, why leave? It's more fun this way. I like it too. Yeah, I'll definitely come back. This was fun. Oh, good. Thanks. Um, Kevin Nealon, you can see him at Helam Comedy Club in Philadelphia this August. And uh, you can see him on, what is it, Last Man Standing? Uh, no, it's called Man with a Plan no, on CBS sorry. on sorry. Monday nights. Tim Allen show. That's that is so sorry. terrible. <laughs> sorry, I heard That's man. Right. Can I tell you, I have such an appreciation for sitcom actors because I I've seen your show a few times and you're very funny. Thank and you. I love it. I think it's such a it's such a hard skill. So I have so much admiration yeah, for you it's guys. It's fun. It's fun. But yeah, it's Man with a Plan on Monday nights <laughs> on CBS. 8:30, 7:30 Central. Yeah, you're funny. And uh, I have a little show called Hiking with Kevin on yes. YouTube. Hiking with Kevin on YouTube. Yeah. Yeah, you invite. Uh, <laughs> um, no, so it's you know you're not a hiker, are you? He has like big stars on there, Tom. Hey, leave me alone. Chelsea on. Handler was on there. Sarah Silverman. All right, I don't rule anybody out. Who else is on there? Who's your Owen Wilson? Oh, ah, love He's Owen O'Brien. Jimmy Kimmel. Jesus. Yeah. Um, it's these little nobody guests that he has on. I had um, Robert F. Kennedy Jr. will be on this Thursday. Really? Jeez. Yep. Um, yeah, a lot of fun people. Bobcat. Wow, it must oh, be nice God, to yeah. get together with other white people and just have a nice conversation. <laughs> 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 Tiffany Haddish was on. Haddish, oh, love her. Right? Yeah. Just kind of Sydney that. Portier. That you did uh, not have Sydney <laughs> Portier on there. <laughs> no hiking. No. You no. hiked with Tiffany. Yeah, that's fun. Yeah, you'll check that one out. Yeah, she's yeah, great. Right. We've uh, known her for a long time. YouTube.com forward slash Kevin Young Comedy or hashtag Hiking with Kevin. Hiking with Kevin. All right, yeah. there it is. Um, we'll leave you on this song. We have uh, listeners that create songs. Um, it's called She's Got Tits by Joseph <laughs> and John Juarez. Thank you guys <laughs> like for that listening. One, Thank you, Kevin Nealon, Thank for you. being here. Here we go. Let's see. Where is it? There we go. Kiss my brother, Jay. She's got tits. And she knows how to use them. Try it out, try it out, try it out. She takes shits. And she knows when to do some. Oh my god. Try it out, try it out, try it out. She had tits. Oh, she oh. takes shits. She had tits. Oh, she oh. takes shits. She's got tits. And she knows how to use them. Oh man, oh man, oh man. She takes shits. Oh man, oh man, oh man. She knows when to do some. Oh my god. She had tits. She takes shits. She had tits. She takes shits. Oh shit, okay, okay, okay. Oh shit, okay, okay, okay. That's how we do it. She had tits. She takes shits. She had tits. She takes shits. Oh man, oh man, oh man, oh man.